And a very good evening or good <coughs> afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome uh, to this episode of the ProSynth Network show. It's 90-something. We're getting close to 100. Uh, we won't linger on that. We'll celebrate that when it comes. But welcome to, to the show. Um, we're going to talk about all things kind of music technology. We have a very special guest who I'm all sure you know and love. And so we're really looking forward to chatting with him. Um, before we do, let's just kind of get the housekeeping stuff out of the way. Uh, first of all, please do like share and subscribe if you haven't already you can like the show just underneath there just press the little thumbs up if you like all the thumbs down if you don't um and if you haven't already subscribed if you're new then please do and hit that bell to get your notifications and share the link with all of your friends family and loved ones it would be most appreciated um if you want to donate to the show because we are completely funded by our audience and we're super grateful for that uh then you can do so in a couple of ways first of all you can donate to our uh, channel uh, by this link here which is again in the description below the video or you can use YouTube super chat super stickers uh, that'll be fantastic and uh, every little penny that you uh, you donate to us helps us keep the show going pays for all the bills and uh, yeah uh, maybe a, a cheeky little holiday in the Maldives for me and Ben a little later in the year um, also you can keep in touch with us through all of the social media channels so that's twitter uh, instagram and facebook and of course youtube which i guess most of you are watching us from all of the same handle at prosynth network i believe that is everything out of the way so um first of all uh, ben isn't going to be with us tonight unfortunately he's got a gig he's working um he didn't say whether he would try and dial in after sound check but if he does we'll bring him in but i don't think so i think he's quite busy and he's not been well this week so uh we'll cut him a break and uh we've got some lovely people standing in uh to help me manage our guest and wrangle them and throw questions at, in their direction um before we come to our super special guest this week let me just bring in as ever um the wonderful siri um with her owner kent spong siri say hello <laughs> okay. No, forget it, no. forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Never mind. How are you? Are you okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A little Good. disorientated, but other than that, Good. Excellent. Well, hope you stay. I, I I can't help but notice what you've got to your right hand side there. It's right, something rather big and blue and grey. Yes, it is, isn't it? And weighs a ton. Oh, look at the and the beautiful yeah. thing underneath it as well that's just popped oh. up. Hello, <laughs> look at those back. eyes. Yeah. Eyes. <laughs> oh, how's your week been? Been busy? Um, yes, very, very, very busy. Trying to get many, many things sorted out. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just been, it's been nuts, basically. Cool. Well, <coughs> busy's good. There's a lot of things. I mean, mm, 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 yeah, 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 as well. But sharp yeah, pressure. But, yeah, but most of it has been, yeah, just crazy, crazy stuff. No, good stuff. Well, I'm going to come and see you tomorrow, whether you like it or not. Which will so, make it uh, crazier. Yay! <laughs> cool. Excellent. Well, thanks ever so much for coming along. And, of course, thank you to Andrew Brooks for your donation there. Thank you so, so much. Um, standing in uh, in the kind of the, the other side of the guest spot, uh, a man we haven't seen for a little while, but we're absolutely delighted that he's agreed to join us this week to help us out. Uh, it is the wonderful Mark Zaffin. Yay. Wonderful! Well, I'm not, not so sure hang about on. that. Hang on, I've got something for you. What's that? <laughs> there you go. You can have applause. Yeah, there we go. How are you, sir? I'm <laughs> actually well. Once the applause is finished in my ears, I'll be able to Maybe. hear myself. But um, <laughs> there you go. no, I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I, oh yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay good. actually. Just good a good stuff. thing. Because yeah. you've been rearranging your studio the last few weeks, so you've kind of just been concentrating on that. I dare have. I, I dare have. I say, it doesn't look a huge amount different to the last time I saw it. It won't. <laughs> 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 Although, my, I'm now standing up because my laptop is now down here. So if you see me looking down, it's not because I'm bored or falling asleep. It's because that's where the screen is Absolutely. right now. So. No, that's cool. Excellent. Well, look, thanks ever so much for coming along. Um, apart from studio awesome. redesigns, anything interesting been happening in your world, music-wise? Yes, just getting back into doing some composition now that things are up and running again. Mm -hmm. And that's been a long time. It's mm. been a long time. So that's feeling good. It's feeling good. good. Excellent stuff. Well, look forward to hearing the fruits of your labour at some point. Um, thanks for joining us. 
as always, and uh, it just leaves me um, to introduce our very special guest this week. Uh, let me just switch the camera over to me. There we go. Um, this man has been in the business, and I do not mean this in any way disrespectfully, for a very long time. Um, he's been around the block more than once, and he wears many, many hats, most famously a, a nice big kind of white beret type affair when he's on stage as keyboard player with Nile Rogers Chic. Uh, he's a producer, an engineer, a consultant. He's uh, sold audio hi-fi. He's worked with David Bowie. He's worked with, of course, Nile Rogers and many, many <laughs> others besides. He's a great instrumentalist. He's also very famous on the live stream circuit, most famously, of course, on uh, Nick Bat's Sonic State on a Wednesday. But we have managed to get him here on a Friday night. It is the one and the only Mr. Richard Hilton. Would you like a round of applause as well? Oh, sure. Give it, hey, give it up. Go. Hey. Hey. Give it up. Hey. Hey, it does Thank go on, apparently, but I can... Let me, yeah, I can... No, no, it's starting again now. Oh, I don't want that. <laughs> very kind, Rob. Very kind. Let me see if I can... This is... Oh, this is embarrassing. See, I, I managed to figure out... You know, we were working on some technology issues the other day with looping audio around the, the systems of it i actually managed to figure it out and now i can do all this stuff and i've now fallen foul of my own technological achievements so there <laughs> well, that's we go. good have welcome fun welcome to my world yeah. <laughs> have fun with it. so um do we find you well today yeah yeah good. good how's the brisket it smells amazing cool i'm looking forward to it this is my first time with uh, nice. beef brisket in a slow cooker so uh but i awesome. did conjure up a pretty cool rub and sauce and so i'm cautiously oh. optimistic i've had my dinner and i feel hungry already <laughs> i wish you <sighs> were here yes indeed so um thanks ever so much for coming on we've been bugging you for a while to come on and um here you are uh, what's been going on in your world recently anything cool fancy enjoyable exciting well pretty much everything that is going on that's exciting is going on within a five foot radius of where <laughs> i'm sitting right now um <laughs> Lots of learning, trying softwares, trying different ways of connecting things. As you know, we spent some time researching the whole looping back uh, process. Um, constantly pra I'm practicing daily on, mm -hmm. uh, on this one and yep. also on this one. And, uh, and I'm cooking and I'm trying to stay healthy. And cool. I've got, you know, do various family things and business things and mm -hmm. keep talking, you know, talking with my two sons constantly about various nice. music and technology things and family things and mm -hmm. uh it's been good i mean i i have i i can't complain about a darn thing and if i did okay. you should slap me upside the head with the <laughs> trout because we'll try. <laughs> uh, i haven't i haven't got a thing to complain about and awesome. i'm looking forward to the possi i believe we're going to start gigging again pretty soon and nice. uh, mm. looking forward to actually getting together in a room with people and playing music yeah. for happy audiences yes always good how, how is the weather in connecticut at the moment it's uh unseasonably warm today yeah uh like uh, what would how would that it's 53 fahrenheit i don't know quite how that translates it might be minus 12 in celsius or something or plus, mm -hmm. uh, plus 12 rather mm -hmm. in, in celsius i don't know it's somewhere in that it's not it's it's almost it's almost spring like but you know it can't last because it's still no. february and this weekend we're supposed to get a uh cold front come through and possibility right. of precipitation and snow and things Ugh. like that so Ugh. I hate this stuff. I and hate this stuff. weekend is also a big weekend in the united states because it's super bowl weekend <gasps> of course and then valentine's on monday yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah Who, who's in the final <laughs> Put me on the spot. Ah, I don't know because I don't really follow. Two football teams. I have been following, and I should know the answer to this because some of it is surprising. The Bengals, I believe, are one of the teams. Is that Cincinnati? Yeah, it is Cincinnati. And, and now I feel oh, not like the band. An, I feel an obligation. <laughs> no, not <laughs> Bengals, not Bangles. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, and L.A. Apparently, Paul Artola just said Cincinnati and L.A. Yeah, yeah. Forgive me, guys. And I, the Rams. I should know this. Yeah. The Rams. Yeah, yeah. Both, yeah, yeah. both teams that won very difficult paths of games to get to this mm. point, and were not expected to get to this point, really, because you had to defeat the Packers and the Patriots to get there. And yeah. uh, so this is sort of a two well-deserved dark horse teams i mean not that los angeles is a dark horse team but but mm -hmm. uh 
the Bengals, I don't think, have been in this position in a long time, yeah. if ever. And uh, halftime show promises to be a hip-hop gonna... extravaganza. I was going to ask, who is the halftime show this year? I know it involves a bunch of rappers. Uh, okay. And, and uh, Snoop Dogg is one of them. Okay. I think Dr. Dre is one of them. I nice. think Eminem is one of them. Oh, wow. So it's like the whole And death. I'm leaving yeah. somebody else out. And there may even be a female uh, participant in this parade. But well, it's a parade cool. of rappers for 20 minutes nice. in a carefully sc sculpted pre-assembled show as yes. one would do <laughs> even if it was a band in most cases indeed so uh in this case obviously um yeah. and uh i'll be here watching cool. it on one of my lovely tvs yeah well i i try i always try and catch the the halftime show because i'm really not into the game unfortunately but um yeah every now and again they they, they pull the rabbit out of the hat so to speak with the halftime I mean, prince was fantastic I thought Lady Gaga was quite cool um, a few great. years ago. Yeah, so, yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I shall watch that one because I do like a bit of Snoop and Dre, you know. Damn oh, the well, kids. this will be a big night for you then. Yeah, you're, you're in, absolutely. You're in, you'll be in heaven. Yeah, <laughs> well, for 20 minutes. Anyway, um, listen, thanks ever so much, Richard. There's the gang. We're all here, and um, we're going to be going through some news topics. Um, there are actually some interesting ones this week. Um, things have kind of perked up a little. Um, so we're going to be talking about those. And of course, we're going to talk to Richard about his career and uh, things that he's been doing in the past. And if you have any questions, please do send them into the chat room. If you can, this week, help me out because normally Ben will sit here and he'll mark all the questions for me to ask. So if you could start your question in the chat with a capital Q and then maybe a space or a hyphen or something, and then your question, that will just help me pick those things out. Um, and then I can hopefully do that. And if I miss them, do remind me, politely, of course. Um, so <laughs> thanks ever so much to all of the people in the chat. There's loads of you in there. Uh, great to see you all. And if you're watching on Catch Up, uh, then I hope that whatever you were doing at this time on a Friday was good and that you're going to enjoy the next couple of hours. Um, so let's kick off with our first news topic of the week. Um, this has kind of been around for a little while, but it's kind of flown under my radar, maybe because... I'm not really into modular or Eurorack, but this actually seems really interesting. This is the Wangulator, which must win best name for a, a hardware device ever. Now, let's have a quick look at the, uh, the promo video here. So there you go, that's the Wangulator Performance Controller from wangsynthcontrol.co.uk. Um, got a win prize for best name, but I just kind of like the, the form factor of this and the fact that you know it just fits under your hand and then you can just move your, your fingers and thumbs and, and change stuff. Um, I know that we do have one person who has a little bit of Eurorack, I think. Is that you? Do you have some Eurorack, Zef? Or is that just uh, no? Get him no. over. You don't. You do no. hardware jams, no? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in 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 time on the tradition, we're going to go to our special uh, guest first, Mr. Richard Hilton. What did you think of the Wangulator? Is this something you could see um, being useful? Something you might want to use yourself? I could see it being useful. It is not something I would want to use myself. <laughs> One look at the picture on their website at the hand position of the person operating it told me I never want to operate this thing. Sure. I'm I'm an ergonomic nut job when it comes to hand position and and it just I it that that doesn't look like it to me. Sorry. Mm. I know it probably looks like it to a lot of other people and maybe it will be very popular and I wish them well. But it doesn't look like it's for me. Yeah, it, it it's quite a big thing. I guess we're all you know different sizes and have different size hands. So 
I guess it will suit some more than others, but it does look like a wonderfully handcrafted unit. I mean, you know, wood and metal and everything. It looks. Well, I'll tell you what would change my mind is watching somebody blow my mind musically with the thing. Sure, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's not cheap either. £475. Each unit's hand-built and take up to two to three weeks to dispatch. What do you think, Zaf? (laughs) Well, I'll echo what Richard says. Uh, You look at it and it looks like an ergonomic nightmare because... Even in the video, he's having to do this. He's kind of floating his hand above mm. the controllers. He's not using it in a comfortable way. And if you look, if you do that with your fingers, mm. that's just not how... If you wanted to do five of them at the same time, it would be almost impossible to do because your hands move inwards. You know, yeah. Your fingers, rather, move inwards. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, I did like that it's a, a small company making it, and it, you know, it looks great. Um, I thought it was funny that the control unit has a socket that says Wang in, which <laughs> was a bit cheeky, I thought. But um, yeah, just like Richard, I mean, it's a lot of money that they're not motorized controllers either. Yeah. So, no. you know, it's a lot of money. Well, how mm. many motorized controller things can you get for that price? And you can maybe True. use eight. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> not, for no, me. not for you. How about you, Kemp? Um... After designing controllers in the past, mm. I'm looking at this and I'm going, all right, it's different, but it's not bringing anything to the party. No. Really. Um, I don't want to belittle it, but at the, at the same time, it's like, at that price, there should be four times as many sliders. Mm. And it's in a configuration that I, I'm, not, I'm not seeing what the benefit of having it in that configuration is. Yeah. To be honest, I mean, it's it's a you know a CC controller, you know, mm-hmm. whether they were in a line together. Yeah, I mean, your four seven five does get you um, the unit plus the the twelve HP module to you know do all the connections from. So it's ah. not just the controller. It is ah. the, yeah. There's a unit to interface it uh, with your Eurac. Um But even so, I mean, it is yeah. It does it does look. At first sight, it looks interesting, but then when you start to think about the practicalities of it, like you said, I, I, I'm getting older, and I'm, I, I swear I'm starting to get signs of arthritis in my fingers. So you could imagine that that's probably going to exacerbate it a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting well, I mean, thing. I mean, we put out a controller that had a hundred and two controls. It yeah. was configurable. You could you could do, assign every control to whatever it was you wanted to control. Um, yeah, all right, it was the size of a Buick and weighed about the same <laughs> as a pregnant elephant, but the thing is, that was at oh. 795. Are and we talking was, about this one right here? It, oh. Yeah, exactly, oh, that right. that one behind you. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, there we go. And in all, in all honesty, pregnant. I mean, there were people out there that wanted me dead, although I didn't <laughs> set the price, but um, you seem to be not getting a great deal that money not really because you're looking at what a small um um, like a tintsy or a a, a little um or some sort of little computer board like yeah yeah running five sliders off it with ccs and it looked like there were some trigger buttons too to be fair well Yeah. (laughs) yeah i mean but you get i think you get somewhere in the region of about 12 preset triggers anyway in 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 the midi list so Mm. You know, some on offs and then some um, uh, uh, variable ones as well. So, y- yeah, um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure why you would want to go for that when you can have one of what 80 billion different controllers out there. Yeah. That do yeah. exactly the same thing for a, a, well, a lot less money, let's be fair. Mm. Yeah, sure. Not that I want to put true. it down. No. I mean, it, it looks nice and everything. It's, I like its ergonomics, although. I would have done it the other way round, more sunken in, you know, convex rather than that way to put Yeah. Who am I? Yeah. I think it's one of those things that some people will just love it and get on with it, but the Mm. rest of us will go, Mm. ah, no, not really, not really my kind of thing. But interesting nonetheless. I thought it'd be worth uh, bringing in um, and having a chat. But if you want more information, that is wangsynthcontrol.co.uk. Um, I'm trying to see where they're based. They're definitely UK based, but uh, 
475 pounds including delivery worldwide and vat within the uk uh say two to three weeks from order because everything is is hand built but interesting nonetheless nonetheless right um let's see what have we got next now this is an item that we have had on the list for a few weeks and every time uh we we come to talk about it uh it's uh, we kind of run out of time or we have better things to do so this time we're going to do it uh, and this is a new um effects plugin that is currently being developed and the the developers have a patreon page and at the moment you can download this completely free of charge you don't even have to sign up for the patreon page but i recommend that you do uh, so at least they get some money towards development because this is a rather interesting uh plugin um from uh daniel gurgly i'm gonna i'm hoping i'm saying that correctly but this is emergence and it is a granular effects plugin let's have a quick listen to what it sounds like I mean, it does sound really, really... I mean, I am uh, very partial to a granular effects or granular synthesizer. Um, and this seems to have four... Uh, what they, they call streams you know for basically four playheads that are moving around and uh, you know going through the sound as you play it in live and you just you know plug this into your audio chain and you can get some really really nice effects um Zaf did you have uh, a chance to have a look at this or maybe download it and play yeah. with it I didn't download it <clears throat> watch the demos I thought it sounded great I'd like to know what the um, latency is in mm. terms of you know playing live I mean, there's playing live in terms of a door, and there's playing live. You know, I'd like to know what the latency is. But yeah, um, um, other than that, I mean, the when I first saw it, the UI was very, oh, uh, you know, all those controls. Yeah. But uh, it confused me because you've got all the um, layers, if you like, going left to right, and then the LFOs go downwards. And it yes. just seems, why do they do that? Why don't they just do everything going that way or everything going downwards? So mm. that confused me because I was going, what, what's going on? But that's just my small little mind. But <laughs> sound-wise, I thought it sounds great. I'd like to know what it's like later because I'm now d doorless. So right. I do use Logic as a sound effects module. Okay. So um, it would be interesting to know if it works in real, real time for mm. me. Yeah. I mean, I plugged it into Logic and was just uh, had it going, plugged it in under an instrument and just started playing. And it, I, I didn't measure latency, but it seemed to be quite responsive. Um, but there's, there's no details on the, um, on the website. Let me just bring that up. Um, so it's on Patreon. To, if you want to go to this, just go to patreon.com emergence. Or as Daniel Gurgley says, is the name there. So just uh, look for emergence on there. And yeah, it's there for Mac and Windows uh, version zero point three, um, and I just like I mean, you said you know the, the controls looked whoa, so many rotaries there, but once you realise that there's just four streams and four mm. LFOs, then it's you know starts to become you know makes makes a bit more sense. Rich, did you get a chance to to listen to this or have a play with this at all? I did listen to the demo. I didn't play with it. I'm totally intrigued by this thing. Mm. I think it's fantastic. And I am interested in the textual possibilities. I didn't see it all going in one direction as Mark describes. I saw things that were going in both directions or looping front to back and back to mm -hmm. front. Or um, it was behaving like the kind of granular thing I would expect something that purports to be a granular device to do. And, and uh, I liked it. I was totally intrigued. And I think it's hilarious that the guy who writes it is named Gurgly because it is a bit gurgly. <laughs> it's a little bit like having an accountant named Bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, but it's also very pleasant to to note that, that he's giving this, well, I say giving this away for free. He's allowing you to download this completely free of charge. It's, it is a, in a pre-version 1 state, but I never had any issues with it. There was no bugs or crashing that I found. 
Um, but if you want to subscribe on his Patreon page, it's just a dollar a month, which is, you know, that's, you know, for us in the UK, that's what, 76 pence? It's nothing. Um, so, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting one there. Kent, you are a granular fan? I'm getting there, definitely. Um, yeah. I, I quite liked it, actually. I messed around with it, and um, I had a microphone set up anyway, and um, I think it was probably Nelly barked and it picked it up and started <laughs> messing with it and honestly it sounded like that is the dog's home on acid after about <laughs> 30 seconds it was quite it was, it was good I enjoyed it I'm thinking yeah it'd be really interesting for making up you know more evolving wonderful sort of drones going on in the background and mm. you know if you're into that kind of thing and um, I mean because it is it's, it is basically I, well I, I found it to be more of a um, a sample mangler than um I, I wasn't I wasn't finding anything particularly you know uh, traditionally musical about it but mm. it was definitely interesting for creating uh various sounds and things like that so, yeah yeah i liked it i yeah. liked it yeah i say and anything that doesn't cost you that much at all is is going to be good um well, it's a so, win. yeah absolutely so <laughs> patreon.com and just look for emergence daniel gurgley I, I do hope I've pronounced that right, Daniel. If you are watching this, um, I He's apologize going, if I've got it wrong. It's not gurgly. Gurgly or, or something. Yeah, Everybody something. makes that mistake. Uh, I know, yeah. So I'm sorry, but please do correct me and um, maybe we can get you on the show and we can talk about what you're doing because it's really, really cool. And you've got the you've got the approval of Mr. Hilton as well. So let's mm. put that in the tagline underneath your advertising. Um, I just want to say hello to... Oh, they've gone right. See, they, they, they go past so fast. Aussie Boy sixty four, who apparently is new to watching the show. Welcome. I don't know where you've been all this time. We're nearly a hundred episodes in, but hey, we're not going to hold that against you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. We do appreciate your uh, your coming in, and we hope that you enjoy what we offer to you. Um, stick around, hit that subscribe button as well. Do that thing. Um, so there you go. Uh, that's Emergence, uh, currently at version three, and hopefully will be. Uh, further developed soon and we'll bring you more 0. on 3, that as we wasn't know. it? 0.3 yeah. sorry yes that's what I meant to say yes thank you for picking me up there um <laughs> let's see what we got there ah so this is a this is something that's not new but it's been updated to version 2 and we spoke about another piece of software from this company the e, uh, the company's Disco DSP who do make some rather cool uh, little tools i use a few of them and this one is very interesting because not only is it a sampler, but it's also um, a one of these you know devices that can freeze your VSTIs, so you can sample your VSTIs within this plugin, make new instruments, import um, lots of old kind of uh, sampler formats, and mess around with them. Uh, dual zero delay, seven uh, built-in effects, flexible modulation. Unfortunately, there isn't a video that shows version two, and I didn't want to kind of show earlier versions because it might have changed somewhat since then. But version two now adds uh, Apple Silicon support with M1 capability. It's 64-bit VST, VST3, and audio units. You can also host your plugins within uh, VST plugins within there so that you can sample them. Um, lots of features in there, 128 programs with unlimited zones, um, nice big powerful playback engine, uh, and it costs a mere £99 to buy. Um, I guess for, for Mac users with Logic that has the auto sampling feature built in, this is probably maybe not on every Mac owner's list, but maybe for Windows users and Linux, of course, because it is available on Linux too. Um, this is an interesting and quite useful tool and you know they make uh, some some really cool products I mean for example uh, OBXD is a really nice Oberheim uh, emulation um, we were speaking about what were we speaking about High Life I think it was the other day that has just gone completely free and that can do similar things to this but only in Windows not in not in Mac um, and you've got Discovery Pro you've got Phantom which is one that I wish they would update soon because that emulates um, very accurately for op FM synthesis such as the DX11 TX81Z kind of thing so it'd be nice if they could update that soon to work on my modern computer um, but uh, let's go to Kent first did you uh, have a look at this did you, you know, have you tried it did you is this something you I, yeah I, I did have a look at it yeah for sure um, I don't know I'm in two minds about it mm -hmm. to, 
be honest with you. I'm I'm not entirely sure about what the. See, I, I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I have access to some hardware samplers. So mm. you know, uh, he I, says sitting next to an emulator. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, there's all that, but uh, in I must admit, it never occurred to me about you know internally sampling VSTs mainly because the bloody things were already there. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm too old school. That's what it is. Big long beard and all this. Because what it is is like you get a sampler to sample instruments and stuff like that that you cannot afford or do not own. Mm-hmm. And, yes. And that that would so that's my mindset. I'm obviously, people younger people coming in are going to see it completely differently. Going to love it, but mm. but um, yeah, because to me it would sound like a bit of a drag to start sampling an instrument that you already have on the bloody computer in the first place mm. um, so I know you can mangle them up but there again there's so many things out there you can mangle up the and instrument also, anyway without yeah. sampling it first and also sampling it will depending on the instrument you're maybe trying to sample if if that's a fairly CPU hungry thing mm. and you just want that one patch you, you can either bounce the track to audio when you're finished or you can maybe sample it and mess around with it in a in a more convenient way um i mean this can import this has got you know it can import pretty much any audio format um that, and s- there's some formats there i don't think i've ever heard of um so pretty much all the major ones and lots of minor ones too plus it can also import um the later akai formats the akp format which was an akai program and then wav files uh it can import exs from logic uh sound fonts as have said uh dls um and XRNI, which apparently is a renoise instrument. Um, the only downside, I think, is that it can't export into any of those formats. So if you wanted to maybe export to some old hardware samplers or something slightly different, you, you can't. It's, it's pr- kind of like a proprietary thing or SFZ, uh, and that's about it. And SFZ is pretty uh, widespread usage. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's, it seems to be you know quite a useful thing. Um, what about you, Zaf? Any uh, thoughts on this one? Well, this is an interesting one for me right now because I've mm-hmm. been doing that. I've been doing auto sampling <clears throat> now. Okay. Ah, moving to a doorless setting, so I've got Machina Plus as my core. Mm-hmm. And when uh, Kent was saying that he doesn't understand why you'd want to sample your VSTs, well, if you want to use those kind of sounds in the Machina Plus, uh, you're gonna have to sample them, and yeah. so. Oh, okay. What I've been doing is using Logic's auto sampler, which is yep. great. As, as yep. if you're staying in Logic, brilliant. If you want to put in the Machina Plus, <laughs> forget it. You have to Not do to so do. much manual crap and renaming and getting them in order. However, there's a free thing that works, and strangely enough, it's from a competitor. There's a <laughs> piece of software called MPC Beats. It's oh, free, yeah. and it works cross-platform. And it'll auto sample VSTs, it'll auto sample your external hardware, and most importantly, it generates files that are drag and drop compatible with the machine. So, mm-hmm. for me, this thing, if it had come maybe last week, I would have looked at it and gone, oh, maybe this will work. But literally today, I found this out about the uh, MPC beats, and so mm-hmm. I've, been, I've already done two sounds. Um, with two VSTs to put on the Machina Plus, and it works seamlessly. So it's free, and uh, you know—is that the the Akai software? Yeah, MPC Beats. It's called. It's completely free. Mm. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got. I've downloaded it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it and mm. it's the auto sampler can do four la- uh, four velocity. It can only do four velocity layers. So if you want okay. more, well, tough. But mm. um, but for my needs, it's great. Yeah. No, that's that's the one thing that I, I when I was looking at the the settings for um, the the Disco DSP software that you can set uh, you can really get into you know, really get into the weeds in terms of how many samples you want, how long you want those samples to be. Um, you, you can really fine tune the auto sampling features, so the and it, and it also tells you. So every time you change the settings, it will give you a close approximation of how much disk space that's going to take. So if you you, you want to sample, say, you know something really kind of detailed, 
um you can throw it into like you know 128 note or 88 notes or whatever and um you know 10 velocities per note and it will tell you that that that's going to give you a 30 gigabyte you know package of sounds so then you can start tweaking to get it down you know so it's it, i like the fact that it told you how much this how much space this your your work was going to take up before you committed to doing it because you know you press that button and let it go and it takes 20 minutes and then you end up with this massive file that's no use to to man nor beast is 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 not very helpful so i kind of like that aspect to it uh, how about you richard did you uh, form an opinion on this one i did but now i'm wondering if i even understand what it is okay um <laughs> what i heard in the audio demos that they provided was drastic ability ability to create drastic manipulations of audio mm -hmm. seemingly easily and quickly although then i couldn't really see how easy and quick it was to do but it looked to me like a very cool sample based production environment uh -huh. so when we talk about auto sampling vsts i don't i i fall off the truck right there because sure. There is not a physical thing called a VST. VST is a format, a file mm -hmm. format, and a and an audio format and a, a software format that allows certain things to happen. So when we talk about sampling something that isn't material to me, I can become immediately confused mm. because the use of the word VST in this case seems to refer to a virtual instrument that's playing in VST format. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. I, th I think we might have kind of over the that side of, of what it does, the fact that it does the auto sample. I mean, it does have a very powerful sample manipulation uh, feature. Auto set sampling there. from what? In other words, what do I need automatically to have happen? So basically, you load your plugin into this, so it will host your VST plugin. So I've loaded, say, some Arturia synth, just for the yeah. sake of this yeah. conversation, into one of their slots. Yep. And then I play some four bar piece of music into it and it creates an audio file out of what I've played. No, what what it does is, is you, right? No, what it does is it's basically going to take a sample of every note or uh, depending on how many notes you set and it will basically do the, the 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 task of sampling that instrument so that you have a set of samples that you can put into a It'll, sampler. It, oh, I see. And, and then say so, well, not uh, this thing though. In other words, in other words, they're going to create use, yeah. You can a use sample it in this. set we, that you can open in contact or something it, well that's uh, that's what i was saying it doesn't export into to contact format it just exports into some pretty basic stuff so you can use it as a sampled instrument within this or there are some ways that you can extract it to use it in other things so basically if you want to mangle samples of an arturia say cmi plugin you get it to auto sample it it will create a sample instrument within this this tool bliss and then you can then mangle it using its editing audio editing features within that. So it's it's kind of like it's just like a, a regular sample, but it automates the the sample acquisition process. If that makes sense, it sort of makes sense <laughs> to me, but I don't quite understand how to use it then because I saw it in in the demos I heard. I envisioned mm -hmm. this thing to be some kind of self-contained production environment that might produce really interesting results on sampled material mm -hmm. from which you could then build a track. Now, right. maybe that's not what it is at all, in which case, I don't know what I think of it. But, um, <laughs> but so it's kind of confusing to me as a product now, especially after hearing you guys talk about it. But, but uh, and I'm not sure I ever understood it now. So I'm still <laughs> not sure I understand it. Um, but I liked what I heard. And yeah. I was interested in it based on that and based on the seeming availability of creating certain kinds of very uh, drastic musical textures seemingly quite easily and well mm. not unlike the previous product which created yeah. certain kinds of textures e seemingly fairly easily and well but mm -hmm. but uh i'm not sure what to do yeah. with auto sampling and why i want to do that like ken said if that's all it's going to do why don't i just run the vst and record the audio yeah i, mean, I don't understand um I, I mean i, I guess i'm coming at it from you know I, i've been sampling for for years and you know predominantly in hardware and to get an instrument into say my akai sampler 
um, then I'm going to you know maybe want to use this to sample that and then create something there. However, if you want to use it as as a standalone sampler itself, then it has all of that stuff because it has full on wave editing and loads of effects and lots of automated you know zones and parameters and loop points and all this kind of stuff. So it is technically it's a sampler in its own right, but it has this added benefit that if you want to sample a VST plugin to then run that through its sample manipulation tools, then it makes that very easy to do because it will host a, a plugin within itself and then sample it, you know, however many notes you want sampled at whatever length notes you need, and then you can play around with it. So it's kind of it's I think uh Grace in the in the chat just noticed this uh whiz by um it sounds like a postmodern sampler and and it kind of is in a way it's it's kind of for 99 bucks so it's not bad you know in terms of its feature set compared to uh the likes of say contact which you know is often touted as a sampler but isn't it's just a sample playback uh instrument whereas so this, does, you this could... does this thing arrive as an empty box basically music sound wise in other words you're basically having uh... to create all your own oscillators in order to <laughs> work on some kind of musical idea it, it comes bring... empty I, yeah you just I need to think of it as a sampler i suppose yeah. okay if, just as a okay. physical sampler would arrive yeah okay. i mean uh, they're, i'm they're far might... less interested than yeah. I was when I started. <laughs> it certainly i mean there, there might be some sort of uh samples included um within it. i mean but it's a very clean and simple uh interface yeah, yeah it is um but, yeah it's an interesting one i think I think maybe I've certainly kind of gone off on one tangent and completely missed what some of you guys have seen. And then I'm thinking, oh, actually, now I can see why this might be, you know, worth, you know, a hundred of my pounds or whatever. And uh, uh, what what was really missing for me, as I said, there was no demonstration video of this version of it. There was only uh, demonstration videos of older versions. And I didn't I wanted to see what this could do. Um, so maybe this is something we can come back to once we understand it a little bit. Better. I assumed it arrived with a library of sounds that you could start from. Immediately. It might well do, but it doesn't say. It doesn't make that clear in the. Um, okay, thank you. In the graphics, but anyway, yeah, it's um, yeah. It's, if you want to well, try it out, it's disco dsp. I might really like it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I think with disco dsp, most of their products um, you can download and use, and you just. Uh, there's some kind of uh, like you know noise after 15 minutes or something um i might be wrong on that i haven't actually downloaded this to play with it um but i do know that on other stuff it's they're very flexible on there like obxd it says it costs 49 bucks but for personal use it's free but they don't make that clear so you just download it and it's there and it's usable and you can mess around with it but if you want to use it commercially then you just have to make sure you buy the license it's kind of a very relaxed attitude to things, which I like. I like that. Um, right. So let's see. What else have we got? Oh, yes. This was an interesting a new announcement um, from uh, our friends at UVI, which always uh, they always seem to come up with something really useful. Um, this is something that is now in its fourth iteration. Uh, and this is uh, UVI's Vintage Vault 4. Oh, I thought I pressed the play thing just... There we go. Have I listened to this? So there's something like 36 instruments in this now, all deeply multi-sampled with their own scripted interfaces. And they've added about... I think they've added three or four new instruments to the overall package now. Vintage Vault 4 is available now from UVI. 
Um, it's a massive package, and I, when I say massive, um, the the size of the download. Sorry, it's bloody adverts. Um, <laughs> Two hundred and eighty-one gigabytes. Um, 36 products, 14,500 presets, over 833,000 samples, uh, all at a, um, all recorded at 88.2 and presented at 44.1 kilohertz, um, supports audio units, AAX, VST and a standalone, um, as long as you've got the UVI workstation, which is completely free of charge, uh, or, or UVI Falcon, this will work in any of those, um. The, the amount of instruments is, is, say, 36 full, you know, deeply multi-sampled instruments here, uh, ranging from, you know, Fairlight Synclavias, Mellotrons, um, emulators, uh, 808s, Fismos, Profit VSs, Wave uh, stuff, and PPGs, and Moogs, and Korgs, and Rollins of all sorts of descriptions. UVI, I mean, their sampling is, is superb. It's very, very good quality and the really they have a really nice interface that has a lot of common features so that if you got used to one you move to another and it's everything's kind of in the same place or has the same uh nomenclature or you know layouts it's it's just very easy to to get into it's not cheap on its own it's about 600 pounds or <laughs> euros or whatever but it's currently on offer at 399 and of course if you are a vintage vault owner uh one two or three then you'll get a further discount because um you're just paying for the upgrade but it is a significant um sized library and uh yeah i'm you know i've got vintage vault three takes up a lot of space but there's always something really useful in there um it's not just samples of the synthesizers they'll have arpeggiators uh, they'll have in, in the cases where there are drum sounds they'll have drum pattern layout so you can mess around and they all evoke the the thought of the you know the the, the instrument that they're sampling anybody got any uh, burning uh, desire to take up this one first any fans of this one sure no. go then Go, Richard. I like UVI. Yeah. I like their products. I like the people. Um, I admire the work they're doing. They've done some great software pieces. Uh, just the synthesizers alone, Falcon, for example, is just stunning. Yes. Um, it also hosts pretty much everything else they sell, which is pretty cool because you can integrate all of them together in one very, very, very nice interface. All of their sample sets tend to arrive really nicely scripted mm -hmm. with usable parameters available on a on the quote unquote simple page. And yet you can usually pull away the simple page and get down into your nitty gritty uh, deep falcony kind of stuff if that's what you want to do. Um, the sample sets tend to be outstanding. Um, that said, I bought the memory Moog, and maybe it's just because I have so much uh, the memory Moog sample set, which is PX something or other. I don't recall. Yeah. But uh, I have so much romance about the memory Moog, and it wasn't it wasn't what I remembered, but it was good and mm. usable and sounded great and was well scripted and easy to access parameters in, and it yeah. was it was cool. And I have other sample sets by them. I have some of the Roland JX series, mm -hmm. which uh, I also you know, have a warm spot in my heart for my MKS-70, which I shouldn't have sold. And uh, <laughs> that was great. That's great, that one. That one sounds fantastic. Yeah. They all sound great. Their pianos sound great. I like I like their products in general. Mm -hmm. I have no reason to think that this wouldn't be an incredibly useful thing for a studio owner to have in his computer arsenal where he may not have uh, otherwise have a room full of synths to draw mm. from and having all of these different opportunities at this in the same easy to load easy to operate package is a very desirable thing so i applaud them on this yeah. product and i like them in general yeah yeah they're, they are really great people i mean I've, I've worked with them for a number of years very friendly very generous and very skilled at what they do um just to show people what is included here and this uh, this might be a full list so you've now got um a bit one which is an italian uh polyanalog uh synthesizer that's new to this package um emulation 2 plus which has been available on its own for a little while 
that's now included in vintage vault hybrid 6000 now i was glancing at this what is this emulating i i don't know is that it's a it's a drum uh library but i i don't know what it's emulating it just it stumped me i couldn't think of it um maybe some clever person in the chat room will be able to tell us but it's it's um yeah, it stumped me. There's also Prime 8 Plus, which is an 808 uh, sample pack. Um, Program 24, which is the Sultan um, machine, the, the kind of the accompaniment machine. Uh, PX Memories is now in there. Sunbox is in there. Super 7 is now in there. And then we've we've got things like the Beatbox Anthology, which is you know, crammed full of great drum sounds. Cameo, which is the Casio CZ emulation. There's um, a Yamaha CS7040 uh, emulation in there there's the dark light which is of course the fair light um there's a whole thing called digital sensations which emulates those kind of classic digital synths of the early 90s there's the fismo um that's in there as well in digital sensations too and i will go i mean there's there's a big fm suite in there which is very nice uh there's a dk synergy <coughs> emulation uh, there's the jp stuff i think that uh, rich was alluding to there no, I was talking um, about JX, but it's in there oh, somewhere yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> lots of stuff. Um, Ob Legacy, Oberheim stuff, the Apollo, which is oh look a Polymog. Yep, and uh, PX10, which is the Prophet, and so on and so forth. It's, I mean, it really is crammed full of some really great instruments, really great samples. Um, but it is completely sample based with lovely scripted front ends. Ken, have you ever bought? A, you're, a, you're a Falcon guy as well, there aren't you? Yes, um, I've just started being, should we say, um, mainly because Richard hit me up and he goes, why don't you own Falcon? What's the matter mm. with you? Um, so I got it. Um, yeah, I got a couple of UVIs. I think I've got the PS3200 as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're a fantastic company, really great people, and I would love a free copy, please. <laughs> um, also, um, no, the, if I had one one little irk about it it's 36 instruments and those names are not giving away what the instrument is emulating yes i go oh what 36 new names to learn now some some are, are <laughs> less obvious than others that's for yeah, sure I, I, if it could lend the names could lend themselves a little bit more to what they're emulating like cheekily even because mm -hmm. you know but digital sensations yeah whatever yeah. So you le yeah. you mean like memory boog? Yeah, literally. <laughs> if it's that corny, I don't mind because then I go, oh, I know what that is. And yeah, yeah. You know why they don't do that? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> apart from being embarrassed if they did. <laughs> well, there's that too, but I, but there's people who own the names of these products. Um, who yeah, are not no, like. No. Yeah. You know. Mind you, I doubt, I doubt if the bit uh, crew. Oh no, no, maybe not. I'm I do. I that. I do know. Um, that some while ago, I think it was on the first version of Digital Sensations. They, I think they had to like withdraw it temporarily to fix something because I think it might have been Korg got a little antsy about something that they'd used or alluded to uh, without permission. So they just kind of tweaked something and then put it back on sale. But um, yeah, I mean, it is that kind of slightly dodgy world where you try to come up with you know dark light i mean it's kind of you know it's there and i mean you, you only have to see the hospital beige and the green on black and you know exactly what that is mm. um i do you know I, I really do like their their cs 70 one that was always one of my favorites not that i've ever played the original but i just liked it it was just very nice i found it a good match actually yeah really oh, yeah yeah it wasn't bad at all it wasn't bad mm. the, the 3200 i forget what the three letters they used um, to hide it under, but um, <laughs> it was okay. It was okay, actually. Um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, pound for pound, brilliant. Mm, yeah, because, absolutely. You know, the, because the PS3200 now is like, excuse me, which kidney would you like to take? <laughs> you know, they're a little pricey for, for a, a glorified string scene, so. Yeah. So this what about you, going. Mark? Well, I'm going to have to go against everybody here and say oh. I can't think of anything worse to have, which is <laughs> which is 36 synths. I would just be in paralysis. I would be just like, 
uh, what shall I do? Too much uh, choice. And I'd see the more, yeah, too much choice. Mm. One of the reasons why I got rid of Roland Cloud, to be honest, it, it was just just too much. You know, shall I just stick to the System 8 now? It's a lot easier, it's clearer. One thing, okay, you've got four options, but if you've got 36 <laughs> possibilities <laughs> from the get go, you know, it's not something that you're gradually getting into. It's so mm. like, oh, I'm going to download this this year and then. Uh, get to know it no no it's like here's 36 play with them and it's like ah <laughs> i can't think of anything worse yeah but they all have fisher price interfaces in other words every <sighs> one of them comes with a front page that puts a bunch of the most requested parameters right mm. in front of you so you really don't have to learn the whole thing you're just sort mm. of cycling through presets looking for inspiration so it's the looking for inspiration part i think that people that appeals to people with this giant library, but I, I sympathize, by the way, with your uh, with your creative paralysis over the too big <laughs> synthesizer thing. But that's why people want it is because they're looking for inspiration. Yeah, and, mm. I, and I, th I think there's a lot to be said also for the fact that if you bought every single one of it, because it's worth saying that every single one of these instruments is available as an individual instrument that you can buy on its own. Yes. If you were to do that, it would cost you about $4,000, uh, according to their website. And you're getting it for, uh, at the moment, $399. Yeah, yeah 400 or, or a little less if right. you are a, a user already. So it's kind of like, you know, it's like anything. It's like, you know, V Collection. How many instruments are in V Collection? I mean, I, whenever I call that up, I go, whoa, geez, is all the... And they all, all the icons look very similar. Um, so it's difficult for me to pick out the one that I want. But it's a big collection of stuff. Do I need it all? Maybe not, but it's great value. And maybe one day I'll want something. I see, that's, that's the problem. You, a lot of people, um, me included, but <laughs> we get enticed by seeing, oh, my God, it's only 10% of the whatever price it is. Yeah. And so you feel FOMO if you don't buy it because you think, Oh, well, it won't be that price forever, so I might as well buy it. But really, how, if that price wasn't there, if it wasn't 10% of the 4,000, would you go out and buy all those individual things? Probably not. You know, yeah. you'd have to think, which ones do I actually want? Which ones would I need? And then you'd debate over that and maybe choose more carefully. But because of price and value that's what make that's what's making the decision as opposed mm. to creativity if that makes sense i can understand yeah. what rich is saying in terms of getting inspiration and then obviously the more things you have the more quickly you can get inspired especially if the interface is good i can understand that completely but for me personally i know i'd have paralysis but more more importantly half of the things i probably wouldn't ever use you know it's yeah. just always yeah. in there but um and but don't worry because you haven't paid any extra for it because you bought them as this bundle. But I think that's that's something that we need to get away from, personally. I think it's an unhealthy way of thinking, personally. Mm. And it does take up a lot of hard disk drive space. You know, I mean, I know that the costs of hard drives nowadays are coming down considerably and the drives are getting larger and faster. So this kind of, there is, you know... But, you know, for me, I mean, I've got I don't know, something like... 30 or 40 terabytes of individual drives added together and yes there's a lot of space on some of them but I don't necessarily want to fill it up with here we go Got no hard drive, no hard drive space. space left in my drive. I've got the no hard drive space blues, baby. Uh, we're living here in the, in the first world okay. paradise. Oh, Absolutely. yeah, I'll shut yeah. up. Okay. Oh, one thing I, four one thing I think confused me. Cost, four terabyte drives for under 100 bucks. Come on. Yeah, I know. I know. I'll take two. One thing that did um, confuse me about the video when it first started, by the way, was mm. I couldn't understand why they were using the Wonder Woman logo until I realized oh, yeah. they were two... <laughs> Two V's, but I just saw a W on that and all the colours. I thought, yeah. Well, I'm, I, have I clicked the right link? And I'm looking at the show notes. <laughs> yeah, that's the right link. I thought, yeah. anyway, oh, just well, me. No, no, no fair enough. Uh, Vintage Vault 4 is out now, uh, uvi.net. Um, so if you've owned a previous <laughs> version of uh, the Vintage Vault or any of their instruments, I think you might get some kind of extra discount, but it's currently around 33 and a third percent off. <laughs> no! <laughs> Extra discounts. Mark, More discounts. They'll, they'll pay you to take it, Mark. They're fantastic. Yeah. They will people, pay honestly. you to take it. 
<laughs> fantastic people. I love them. I love them. They're, they're lovely, handsome, and gorgeous, and talented, and beautiful people. There you go. I'll, I'll <laughs> yep. pass. I'll, 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 I'll send Alan um, yeah. the the link to the show. Yeah, my I'm email sure. address yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> What are you done with your microphone, Kent? You're pointing it down now. I don't, somebody in the chat was saying, oh, I can't hear him. It's a front face. Yeah, you you're supposed to have it it's like a this. Top, it's a top-sensitive microphone. Yeah, you, you, you right talk there. into the top of it. There's no side-mounted transducer no, 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 on turn, that microphone. Point, point the furry thing literally at your face. <laughs> yes. You're always like that. saying that. You're always saying that. Oh. <laughs> oh. We've messed him up now. Look, we're going to confuse him. As he... Oh, oh, oh god you know what it is don't you don't the, break it this bloody lock thing is where it would oh. <laughs> this played <laughs> microphone mate uh, don't break it it's bloody expensive <laughs> there you go no no you've you've unplugged it mate it's not a very good connection there. how about now that's better yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you don't need to be right on top of it but yeah just you know point it point it at your mouth there you yes. Go. Okay. There, there you go. How's that? That's much better. Much better. You'd never yeah. think that this was a show about people music who are involved in music technology, would you? No, no, no. Do you no, know no. The, 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 the when I do my SOS post podcasts, I speak to many people who have been involved in the music industry for many, many, many years. You would not believe how few of them have a decent microphone to hand anywhere and i'm not you know, i'm not criticizing but it's, it's quite, kind of surprising that you'd think at least they have one microphone um but no it's it's quite i odd. feel i should i feel like i should speak out for old people now but i'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean anyway. i got a nice microphone <laughs> yeah no but i haven't yeah. interviewed for a podcast yet yet Ooh, um that's a threat <laughs> That's a threat for sure. <laughs> right, and um, let's talk about some some really cool, interesting stuff um, oh, okay. that is, that is coming from uh, from Moog. So Moog have announced uh, a new series of uh, documentary uh, movies. They're about twenty five minutes long each, and the first one is featuring the fantastic, the legendary, the incredible, humble genius that is Herb Deutsch. Let's just play a few seconds of the opening. I am very, very proud to have been able to be part of the history of music. I'm unwilling to go around shouting, look at me, I'm a part of the history of music. But I do understand that Bob and I are an important part of music history because that idea has been used in every direction that music can go into and that's just, i mean what a eloquent start to a uh, uh, uh what is a fantastic uh video uh it's 25 minutes long it's the first in a series of five uh episodes and the uh, the other people that will be featured in there are uh, our very own daniel miller from mute records suzanne chiani Bernie Krauss and uh, oh, it's just four. I thought there was five for some reason. It's, yeah, it's Herb, Bernie, Suzanne, and Daniel, and they will be coming out periodically. Um, just, I mean, proper high production value stuff. And I watched the the Herb one today, and I thought I'll I'll put it on and I'll just kind of carry on doing some work. And within five minutes, work was gone, and I just spent half an hour watching, yeah, you know, watching Herb because what a fascinating story he tells. And his voice is just, I love listening, you know, listening to that, that voice. Um, and it's just a fantastic uh, thing that they've put together here. And, of course, it's celebrating his 90th birthday, which was just the other day. Um, so happy birthday, Herb. Um, I'm going to come to Richard in just a moment because I know that he has uh, a story to tell. So I don't want to um, get in the way of that. But, Kent, Zaf, did you uh, give a chance to watch this? Any thoughts on this, on this video? Don't come to me because I haven't had a chance to watch it and I'm looking forward to watching it. So... Good. Okay. I got I got into the first um, ten fifteen minutes of it or so, or ten minutes at least, um, and yeah, it's a lovely, it's a lovely interview. It really yeah. is nice. Yeah. And there's there's some stuff I didn't know in there, but you know the fact that he composed this piece of music based on this mm. terrible tragic uh, terrorist event essentially in 1963, and he, in that piece of music he references JFK. And three days after he finishes his piece of music, 
JFK is assassinated. I mean, it's this. I never knew that story. That whole thing is just mind blowing stuff. Really, mm. really cool. Rich, um, I know that you've met Herb, and and you've sat on a panel with him, I believe, and uh, numerous times. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, your your thoughts on the film, and your thoughts on th- thoughts on Herb Deutsch at ninety years old? Well, bless him. He is just a sweetheart of mm. a human being, and I'm so happy for him to be receiving at finally in his life the recognition he deserves mm. richly deserves because without him and he actually describes one moment in this video where uh you could attribute in large portion to his influence the existence of the envelope generator yeah and uh, and uh he worked elbow to elbow with Robert Moog, as these things were being developed and built, typically either in that storefront that they show you in the video, which was yeah. in Trumansburg, New York, a couple of doors down from a place called the Rongovian Embassy, where we all used to play, <laughs> which was a bar, a great bar. Yeah. Um, or at, Ro- at Bob's house, which was on the road that led up to Trumansburg from the lake, because Ithaca's on a lake. And... Um, quite close to a beautiful, beautiful place called Teganic Falls. And a Bob had a house there that I used to drive by when I was in college. And, oh, look, mm-hmm. it says Moog on the <laughs> mailbox. And apparently that garage is where a lot of these things got hatched. And Herb yeah. tells great stories about it and was there, as I say, elbow to elbow with Bob uh, throughout the development process. He did tell me a story once that their early quality control was when they finished uh, uh, a piece, a synthesizer, they would walk out to the driveway and from about waist high, drop it onto the gravel and bring it inside and plug it in. And if it worked, it shipped. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. Um, This would have been, you know, during mini Moog and onward days because prior to that it was all modules and development of modular types of things now all of this took place right near Ithaca New York which is where Mm -hmm. I went to college in the 70s and I saw Mm -hmm. Robert Moog deliver a a speech or a lecture or whatever to about 25 of us in a basement somewhere on the Cornell campus in 1975 (laughs) and met guys who were involved in these early products not the least of whom was David Borden who Mm -hmm. had a group called Mother Mallard's Masterpiece Company that was a trio of synthesists that performed live in Ithaca at that time. And in the beginning, um, in the 60s even, there was a trio called the Moog Trio, and one of the members is somebody who played one of these concerts with Herb, and the other two were guys, musicians from Ithaca, who got into synthesizers, one of whom became my music history teacher and used to lend me his mini Moog, number 89, (laughs) to play on gigs and so i was kind of fortunate that my college choice uh which i was very happy about um brought me to this place that was so close to the sort of foundation of where this stuff began and was developed and being around people who were there for all of that and feeling their vibe so when i finally met herb he was sort of this nobody knows him kind of you know icon to me Mm. because of his participation and then he was so generous in talking about his time with Robert Moog and the development as you can see in this video you can feel his heart he is just a sweetheart of Mm. a man Herb Deutsch and his lovely wife Nancy is, is as well and uh I've had I felt privileged to uh, be around him and get to know him a little bit as a friend, and he's just yeah. he's a great, great man. Yeah, it really is, and and it comes across in in this video. I mean that that very opening bit really struck me as he, here is a guy that is very humble, but clearly had a massive impact on everything that we we involve ourselves in in this in this world. Um, so yeah, uh, it's certainly Zaf. You've got a treat in store. It says it's twenty five minutes, so it's nice. And, and easily digestible and there are um there, there are going to be uh three others so you've got herb um straight away and then you've got daniel miller which i'm really looking forward to that one because daniel's a very interesting man and suzanne chiani as well um who's just been an absolute pioneer 
Um, I don't know so much about Bernie, so I'm I'm looking forward to that one just to get some kind of education in that respect. Oh wow, yeah. So, Beaver and Kraus. There was a duo called Beaver and Kraus at right. the time. Okay. He, was, he was Kraus. Okay. Well, there you go. I, I will look forward to that, and they're all going to be released. Uh, I don't know what the time scale is, but I guess you just, I mean, I'm sure if you subscribe to their socials, then you'll get uh, the various um, notifications there. But yeah, so um, that's Moog Music, the, the company behind the synthesizers. But of course, um, there is also the Bob Moog Foundation, uh, who we enjoy a very lovely little relationship with. And um, hopefully we'll have some news coming soon uh from uh or in regards to the calendars of course herb features in here this is the the moog uh, bob moog foundation synthesizer <laughs> synthesizers pioneers 2022 to 2023 it's an 18 month <laughs> calendar printed on heavyweight paper it's got gorgeous pictures and lots of wonderful information that once you finish with um you might want to um carefully snip and put these fo wonderful photos um into frames and there's some some beautiful stuff in here um and we are hoping uh, that we will be able to import a few of these into the uk to sell uh, to uk customers to avoid extra shipping and import duties uh, post brexit boo uh, so yeah we're hoping to help that there so we're just trying to arrange something in that regard um but the bob moog foundation uh, have launched uh, one of their most popular fundraising events and of course it ties nicely in with the gentleman we've just been speaking about because they are raffling off a uh, mini moog which has been signed by herb on the back plate um and you can buy your tickets now um there it is there's the signature on the uh, the back of the uh, the unit there tickets are 20 bucks each six for 100 14 for 200 or 40 for a cool 500 bucks and you could win this beautiful example um, of of the Mini Moog. Uh, it is serial number 11535. It was built at the uh, Cheektowaga. New, uh, did I pronounce that correctly? Cheektowaga? I hope so. Um, it is has an estimated value of around 10,000 and has been restored um, completely by Wes Taggart, who also built the, uh, the new custom walnut cabinet uh, that you see going around it. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, and you know i've entered every single one of these never won but i do know that my money has gone to a very very good cause so um yeah if you want to win the that lovely lovely mug and they will ship it worldwide um uh, all at their expense um it's a beautiful thing go to the uh moogfoundation.org website and you there's also this great video there of herb uh, messing around with it it's just a wonderful thing and of course you'll be helping uh michelle and all of her colleagues do a fantastic uh job with the Moxeum, the sound school the archive and everything else that they do so uh, please do pop along there and uh, at the very least buy one ticket and you'll know you'll be doing some good stuff there so nice little plug for that um talking of legends according to the blurb a legend is returning and we've got i think we've probably got the right guest for this next topic because this came in literally overnight um roly who had seemingly gone south shall we say <laughs> to be polite um have re-emerged like a phoenix from the proverbial flames there we go give us some musical background there um and they will be announcing in March something new, which kind of looks a little bit like this. Although we only see little snippets of it.
So, according to them, Roly are back with a seemingly new seaboard of some description. Um, I think it's only fair that we go to a genuine seaboard owner with it right there next to him. We, we've gone to great trouble to make sure that he can actually play it so we can hear it. Um, what do you think about this, Richard? Are you, are you excited about this? Does this enthuse you? What are your thoughts? Uh, my thoughts are... <laughs> I'm glad that they're releasing a new product. I hope it works well. I hope mm -hmm. I like it. I hope it feels like the one I already love. Um, mm. The one I already love is starting to show some wear in the middle of the keyboard, and I'm wondering mm. if uh, I need a backup. I'm um, working on it. I will say this. I love the instrument, and they've been very nice to me. They have worldwide at the moment, as far as I know, one service center. And if your product fails in or out of warranty, you have to ship it to London. And I find that incredible in a professional level product. Mm. Now, maybe it's more common than I know. Maybe it's not that unusual. Maybe that's the way people do business these days. I don't know. But I find that incredible that yeah. I should have to pay three times the cost of a repair to ship my product to them so that they can fix it for me. Yeah. Has there been any word of that situation changing at all? Don't I haven't got I certainly no. <laughs> they're certainly no. not sending me <laughs> Christmas cards. But uh I don't <laughs> I hope so. I really yeah. would like to see this company succeed. I like the mm. product a lot. I've invested mm. significant time mm -hmm. in learning to play the thing because it doesn't come easy. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully this product portends good things for the mm -hmm. future with regards to the success of their company and their ability to expand so that my concerns are being met. Mm. Do you think that th the timing of this is maybe jumping in before the Expressive E Osmos eventually comes, which has been promised, you know, for, for a long, long time? Um, right, exactly. How would they how would they have strategized anything against the appearance true. of that product when yeah. the appearance of that product has been nothing but a ghost for a mm. long, long time, longer than anybody had expected or anticipated, and which I also look forward to. But mm. I don't think I don't think it has any more to do with that than what Bob Moog had to do with what Don Buchler was doing. Sure, yeah, yeah. Kent, um, have you got a Roly? Of course, he's got a Roly. There we go. He's got. A Roly. <laughs> Kent loves his Roly. As do we all. In, in my, ba in my baby. <laughs> so, um, yes. Come on, Ken, what do you think? I mean, you you, you own one. Um, I know you mm. like it, but uh, you, you've also got an Osmos E. Um, or Expression or Osmos. Is it Expression E Osmos? I, get, I never get that. The right, the it's right. one you or the other. One. I yeah. haven't got you've it. You've got yet. an Osmos? Yep. No. No, he's got one on order. I've got, oh. like, got so like many things. i got so many things on order. Um, that I haven't come through um, so far yet. Uh, Fiona's keeping a list, so we're going to forget. <laughs> um, I'm. Uh, I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but if Roly have, I don't know, found you know about what six and a half million tucked in a, a drawer somewhere that the CEO didn't know about hasn't spent on champagne and hookers, then cool. <laughs> but I'm not entirely sure that it's not just vaporware. Mm. Again. Um, there again, I don't see... I, I'm trying to see... Then what is there to gain by releasing this? It's because people are not going to go, oh, well, if this is coming out, I'm not going to buy an expression E when it comes out or I'm not going to get a, a Harkon or whatever. It's, I can't see that. So... There must be something to this. Mm. So maybe oh, I think so. Yeah, I think somebody's bought the company out lock, stock, and barrel. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, something like that. But, I mean, because they've got to have the working capital 
to be able to well, put a new didn't they restructure because the, the company kind of went under it had a lot of venture capital investment mm. that then got spaffed up the wall to use boris's phrase um and they've now uh created this this kind of umbrella company called luminary i think it is that then roly is now a brand of this thing so they've they've restructured oh what the lumina i, I the, don't the lumina boards um yeah so yeah i think th Lumi. that's Roly yeah, blocks, Lumi, with, Roly blocks yeah. with LEDs in them. Yeah, that, that was the Lumi yeah. stuff, and they, they were trying to pitch those at an education market, I think, weren't they? Um, but according <laughs> to the yeah, according to the blurb here, this new thing, which we, we're, we're waiting anything between two and six weeks away, mm. um, reimagined, refined, re-engineered for infinite musical expression. Sounds very nice, but of course the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and so we will have to wait and see. But they really have they've pissed a lot of people off um and they've they've certainly upset people or given people a sense a, a, a reason to be very cautious about buying their stuff because as richard said you know servicing is in you know there's one service center and it's here in the uk this is fine for us but not fine for people like richard and anyone else around the world not even to have at least one north american service center which is probably going to be the bulk of the market so it's very odd it's yeah, well, very odd i mean in terms of people being um shied away from um, from if the, you know if this product came out and people going oh no i'm, I'm not going to buy one of them because it's you know because of what they did last time and stuff like that I mean, greatest of respect, the Italian people kept voting for Berlusconi, didn't they? So this is true. If <laughs> that's not really doesn't really count, it doesn't equate anyway. And he so, didn't make any of these, right? No. So <laughs> if if it was a case of this product comes out and it can do what the rice was doing, and it you know and it hits the mark, you know, yeah. it's up to you buy it or don't buy it. You know, but if yeah. you don't buy it, you're not going to get access to that kind of facilities. That's it. I mean, Andy's just put up there that he's he has all of the Roly gear except the Grand, and he loves them. But sadly, you know, he's, he's you know, the company has issues. Yeah, uh, I not, I would I'm glad that he doesn't have the Grand. Mm. I'd be really worried if I was a Grand owner. Yeah, um, that's a big machine with a big engine, and it relies on the software that you put into it. And, yeah, you know, if it's not available, then. <laughs> good night mm. and it's its own special board as well it's not it's not the same board as you got on the roly and the right. blocks it's okay. a completely different shape and everything so mm. but all of that said the seaboard has been a, a, a lovely thing to have and, and mm. richard you know we, we spent some time getting you hooked up would you would you mind giving us a demonstration of what the seaboard can do under the right hands <laughs> well I, i'll give you a demonstration of what it can do under my hands. Okay, all right. Well, we'll give you that. Lovely. I think that deserves a round of applause. Excellent. <laughs> oh, hello. Mr. Wiggly in the room. <laughs> it's, it's all his fault. It's all his fault. He said, all right. you can get the sound effects here and this is how you do it. Um, um, I thought you, down, you, but no, you downloaded it does, to his wearer's FTP. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I mean, yeah. When it's played by somebody who clearly knows what they're doing, it, it really does sound. I love the depth of expression that you get from that. Um, just watching Absolutely, watching your yeah. hands rich and and the way that you're getting that either with left or right or up or down movement it's it, i couldn't do that but i love i loved how it sounds it took a lot of time the mm. piano playing doesn't really get you there and, right okay and you have to be prepared as i keep what that's that who is that? that what is that hang on it's you can It's you. I, I don't know what it is, but it's so I've mu I've muted you. You? Oh, there you go. It's finished. What the hell was that? <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. But there you go. 
I was just delivering my piano playing doesn't really get you there speech and yeah. be prepared to sound like a beginning violin student when you start on right. the thing because you will oh, play yeah. it out of tune and you'll have a hard time feeling like you're expressing mm. what you're hearing in your head and how much it relates to my experience as a young person playing brass instruments. I was just going to say, Melodic yeah. instruments because that's, yeah. that's how I'm hearing and thinking when I'm playing it. More so, I mean, I can use it for polyphonic material, though I'll turn off all the pitch variation because you don't really want to play a road sound with those kinds of pitch variations. It just mm. doesn't feel right. But but um, it's it's uh, there's a learning, a uh, gigantic learning curve. It's mm. a steep mountain to climb, and I've spent years, and I don't necessarily feel like I've arrived at the anywhere near the summit of that <laughs> mountain, but um, far enough up the mountain that I can look back and wave. Yeah. <laughs> and t tell us about the because I, I don't know so please i am completely ignorant on all things roly the the sound engine is a piece of software that runs on a computer and there's so a number of sound engines there are some that they provide and there are some that others provide and basically you can play any synth with the thing mm. okay but you can't play any synth with the thing and have five axes of control over each individual sure. note um, it behaves much more like a quote-unquote normal MIDI controller when you do that. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm running is right now one of their synthesizers called Cypher 2, which is highly MPE configurable, and, and you can translate any of those five things to any number of parameters all at the same time in differing mm -hmm. amounts. So it's really vast how you can interact with the expression aspect and the and the software um i have other software of theirs loaded here one's called strobe 2 this is a single oscillator synth mm -hmm. the the uh, cypher 2 is more of an fm structure mm -hmm. you can actually use audio rate modulation between multiple okay. oscillators uh strobe 2 is the single oscillator sort of uh juno 106 version of okay. you know, And I have something a little buzzier and more horn-like. And um, one of the things I really like about the instrument, and I may have mentioned this to you before, is that in most of our MIDI keyboard playing, the bottom half of the MIDI ra uh, velocity range is absolutely useless to us, and we don't use it. Right. It's, yeah. it, it just doesn't really fall into very much use. This thing... You can play really quietly on it, and mm -hmm. that is incredibly addicting. Yeah, being able to like interact in a very gentle, being able to interact with a keyboard instrument gently like that, mm. an electronic keyboard instrument gently like that, is unusual and mm. uh, feels great to me. Um, that wasn't one of the greatest examples that you just heard me play. And then they have another uh, engine called Equator, which is their sort of main synth. And now they're up to Equator 2. I have the original Equator, which I have a, sort of a pseudo distorted guitar. <laughs> Stupid, yeah, and that changes pseudo. if you go up the key as well, doesn't it? Yeah, there's other modulation. Not so much on this one is there uh, uh, vertical modulation, but on this one, mm -hmm. you've got yeah. modulations vertically, and on the other one, you have modulations vertically. The uh, guitar patch, not so much. Yeah, but you could if that's where you were coming. Yeah, because I wrote some CS pa CS80 patches, didn't I, for Strobe? Stroke you two for it. Wrote, yeah, you sent me patches. Was it for Stroke Two? Yeah, I, I, ha I Then I still have them. <laughs> yeah, the Blade Runner Brass that yeah. I did, which is, is a film. Remember? Um, <laughs> it had a very deep Good personal. Good film, that Blade Runner Brass. Had a very particular deep personal <laughs> meaning for me. I want you to know, and I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's it. I, everything I get, I write Blade Runner Brass for it first before I do anything else. <laughs> Can I just ask, as um, as an owner, Rich, in that um, 
preamble of the release, they were saying that it's been re-engineered. What do you think they've re-engineered? Because what's wrong with it in your in your mind that they would need to re-engineer, or have they done it to kind of cut costs or something like that? What do you think? I I I'm going to be totally guessing if I speculate as to what they've done. What have I heard happen to these things? I've had keyboards fail where, for example, right now I have two notes on this thing that on some patches when I do that trigger other notes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you can see it in their dashboard program, which shows you the way the computer is receiving information from the keyboard. So I'm not sure what they can can probably is sure exactly what kind of jelly oh, they're using. Oh, yeah, I've got a list. Underneath <laughs> uh, these things. But um, there's an elasticity to that jelly that I question. And I've had this thing fail and had to have it replaced, and I've had that thing fail and had to have it replaced and mm. um, for different reasons. That thing fell apart in a travel bag, and actually the wow. keyboard kind of the mm. top of the keyboard kind of came apart from the base and it got funky and they replaced it um which was nice but replacements only get you so far especially when you're falling out of warranty and like i said that's that's what plays into my other issue with them but um i've heard of uh, i believe it was kent who had a usb board fail on a seaboard rise three times okay mm. there you go um so there's things you can do to to enhance the durability of the product because it is in some areas more malleable than than this yeah. um and uses substances like some kind of whatever that conductive jelly is that they're using mm. um it it's I, I don't know what they've done but maybe that's where they went i don't i honestly don't know and I don't know if physically they went to make it different. It's kind of it's really hard to tell from what they're showing you, and they yeah, make they, it. You know, they did that deliberately, so we'll know yeah, in about yeah. you know three weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think maybe that's where the Osmos has because uh, they've gone for the 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 almost you know the hard keys rather actual than keys. soft gel. Yeah, yeah actual keys, and and then wobbly I mean, keys. Uh, yeah, and they've they've introduced all of that kind of expression, but not. Because the the one thing that always seems to come up, and I've seen it come up in the chat a lot today, is you know, oh, I don't like the rubbery keys, the you know, the squishiness. It didn't there wasn't much confidence in the longevity of those things, uh, and I could un I I would think that eventually, I had a, a wrist rest once that t that felt the same as the gel kind of thing that was in there. And after a while of my wrist being on it and sort of rubbing against it, it, it all started to, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I've been playing the hell out of this thing for years and, and very little of it has failed. So mm. I will give them that much. Um, less of it here than, for example, at Kent's where he's had three MIDI board replacements or whatever, yeah. but, which he could force, or USB board replacements, which he could yeah. fortunately do himself. But it's a different kind of beast. Some people... Um, I handle mine with kid gloves. I really do. Even when I traveled with it, um, I really tried not to stand it up on end too oh, long no, because no, 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 no. the way gravity affects the uh, yeah. internals of oh, it. Wow. And Found that out the hard way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Because I had it standing up because where we were doing decorating and stuff and there was just no room for it to be. Mm -hmm. And I stood it up against the wall and it was only there two days. And then when I got it out again to play it the whole bottom two octaves had risen away from the keyboard like it had bubbled up wow it stretched essentially but fortunately wow. um you know a day later it all went back again it's been fine. Yeah. yeah but you can't you can't stand it sideways and it's not good to, to if you knock the usb just gently you catch it on something, it, was awesome yeah. like that. it just snaps clean off the board. So I've modified mine so it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, that's what they've re engineered is they've taken into account all of these things that have just been said and um, you know, made it sturdier and, and longer lasting. But uh, hopefully, lighter. Oh, is it, are they heavy? This, um, this uh, tooled aluminium, but it's okay. a lot of aluminium, so it's cut out of 
like one piece of aluminium. Okay. If you know what I mean. Um, I'm not so, sure I want it to be lighter. Well, it could. No, it could be a little be, light. Because you need something solid into which to set this gelatinous keyboard, <laughs> memory foam keyboard mm. that they've got. And uh, I kind of like the fact yeah, but the, that the, it's the top physically frame doesn't solid. have to be, does it? The, huh? top frame, the top frame doesn't have to be a solid alley as well. Just you can have a, a structure underneath just to keep it nice and rigid because it does have to be rigid. Uh huh. But it, okay. it is quite a weight. Mm. It's quite yeah. a weight. Yeah. It's a so bit, it's got, it's a, got a built in battery then? Yeah. Like a phone oh, okay. battery, really. So can you, you, you can power it off the mains? Um, uh, you can power it over USB. I don't know if you, oh, you can oh, power right, it. Okay. You, know, you can power it off the mains, but it's sort of like when you try to find out what is the adapter that you use to power it. It's all like you must go to the far end of the forest <laughs> and uh, answer they, these questions. Three. Nobody, nobody seems to <laughs> nobody seems to believe know what you're supposed to plug in there. Right? Yeah. The yeah. Never the, got around to that bit. Perennial you know? USB power thing. Yeah. And and. Connectivity to hardware is over USB, is a MIDI over USB or, or Bluetooth. Bluetooth, or Bluetooth yeah. yeah. And okay. it's pretty miraculous how responsive it is over Bluetooth. Mm. Well, as as we know on this show all too well, witty um, and, and modern, you know, Bluetooth uh, connectivity for, for, for MIDI data is pretty good. Yeah. To Mac. To Mac, but not to PC. Oh God. Oh. <laughs> Don't well, go that's the thing. Well, Bluetooth on Windows is not nat Well, it didn't used to be natively supported. I don't know whether that's changed in. Well, if it in has, it, well, I, I mean, I've tried connecting the the, um, the Roly to to Windows uh, when the uh, first iteration of Windows Eleven came out, and mm -hmm. the words "damp string" spring to mind. <laughs> I might as well have used the cable and be done with it. Yeah. In yeah. fact, I did because it was useless. Or you could buy a. A witty unit, <laughs> <coughs> yes, and uh, connect it that way because I, I I'm told by uh, people that have witty and Rollies that they do work very nicely together. So if you have a Windows machine, so with Mac it's not an issue, but with Windows it would be. Um, yeah, cool. All do right. They, well, do uh, they do a witty that has that you know the the printer shaped plug on it? Printer. Sh oh, you mean the square? Yeah. No, they they do. Um, this one, which I shall just unplug, uh, which is the um, the Bud Pro, which is that standard. Won't work. Won't work. Oh, you mean no? But I mean, you have that on your computer. And then oh, yeah, you no, can, yeah, no, yeah. I understand. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Connect, I mean, yeah. if you were plugging something into into the into the rise itself, it would no. have to be the you know, it looks like a little the square house. One. Yeah, a. It's like a little is house. It a? Yeah. Is it the A? And yeah, the probably. Is, this is yeah. B. Because B on right. the yes, on the rollies yeah. is the charging USB it doesn't carry. Yeah, I'm just looking at it now. It has it, yeah. USB information. Yeah, I see. I mean, you can get adapters. You can get little, you know, dongles with. Oh, okay. You can change That's things good. around, but um, yeah, because the is it the yeah it's the Widi U host. Um, if you use that, you can get a little USB C to whatever adapter to connect to your your Roly. And that will then give you WIDI Bluetooth connectivity because it, it uses the USB MIDI thing. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. But I say, uh, Windows users probably the only ones that would benefit from that. Mm. Anyway, there you go. So roadie.com seem to be making a comeback uh, with a new, I guess it's a new Seaboard. They might have changed the name. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, that's coming um, in March of this year. So we've, we've got a couple of weeks to go until... Uh, hopefully we see something or get a little bit more information on that. Um, there was just one other little thing that I wanted uh, to show. Ben sent me uh, a message the other day. He says, oh, don't forget to talk about that Rick Wakeman K um, Korg video. And I'm like, what Rick Wakeman <laughs> Korg video? Um, and I thought it was something like really cool and, and like maybe Rick had done a big demo of something or other. But it's actually just like a little promo thing um, of blessed Rick Wakeman who lives about it's like 20 minutes over that way um and we must i must try and corner him because we do see him quite often in town uh, so we must try and corner him one day and say come on the show um but you've got to catch him in the right mood apparently mm. um but there was this little thing here uh, where he's demonstrating the nautilus uh from korg 
I recently did a, a short film. I did the entire score on the, on the Nautilus because nobody else really in England had got one then at the time, so I knew I was on very safe, wonderful ground. The actual guy, the producers of the film, they went, which church or cathedral did you go to to record that? And I said, I... Oh, lost it. Oh, no. What's happened there? Anyway, you get the idea. Rick waxing lyrical about things, you know, probably because he needed a few quid and uh, just did something for Korg there. End but, of the um, month, yeah. Yeah. If you haven't ever seen... If you haven't ever seen, that's not grammar, is it? If you have never seen Rick Wakeman's acceptance speech at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it is one of the funniest 10 minutes, and it's not safe for work, um, but it's one of the funniest 10-minute <laughs> acceptance speeches you will ever watch. Uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, go and Google it. Um, we'd love to get Rick on the show. He's um, obviously been uh, and done everything when it comes to synthesizers. Um, but uh, you've met him a couple of times, haven't you, Rich? I have um, at least once <laughs> that I can recall. <laughs> you can remember. That I can roll. Yeah, once uh, after a concert of his in New York City at Town Hall, mm -hmm. which was a quartet that included his son Adam mm -hmm. and was very enjoyable. Uh, a dear friend of mine who's a musician and an engineer and a studio owner uh, worked with Rick on some of his soundtrack albums in the 1980s at a studio that he had owned mm -hmm. and has some stories that i'm not going to tell out of school right now but but rick was a, a riot and fun yeah. to be around and so we had been invited to see him play at town hall and we were going to go back after the show to visit him as as one does i guess and after the show i was told okay we eat out here and there's a sort of alleyway next to the theater that we're in that leads to the backstage area where we can go and visit him but i'm being asked to wait and who is there waiting with me <laughs> just the two of us but wendy carlos wow. who i had met previously and we spent i don't know 15 or 20 minutes talking <laughs> waiting <laughs> to go up and meet rick uh, i guess she had attended the concert as well yeah and it was a lovely and memorable and pinch me moment for me because Wendy Carlos had a lot to do with my interest in yeah. these instruments and uh, eventually got up to go up to see Rick and Rick as he is if you've seen him and most Brits have but not too many Americans have mm -hmm. um, he's the life of the party wherever he is and uh, always quick with a joke quite often a slightly <laughs> off-color joke uh, as with the <laughs> oh, Hall yeah. of Fame induction <laughs> that you described um, and is just a, a, a very charming and uh, uh, ch charismatic figure yes as a person uh, I, I don't know if I like him or his playing more because I enjoy both of them very much mm. um, so my experiences with, with Rick, my experience that day was all good, and I enjoyed his concert, and mm -hmm. uh, he was very gracious to us. Mm -hmm. And as a bonus, I got to hang out with Wendy Carlos for 20 minutes. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? Yeah, so um, we, we really do want to try and get Rick on the show. This is something I'm going to have to really work on. Um, and getting in i know that michelle uh did a, there's a great piece from the the still yet to be released um uh, is it, uh was it electronic voyager i think the name of the the documentary about her father and she goes and meets all these people that that had you know um working relationships or friendships with with bob um but there's this wonderful clip that got released of uh, when she came here and i i have reprimanded her on many occasions for, for not dropping by for a cup of tea um but she came down to rick's <laughs> place um and he's got his house and then he's got his storage unit which is uh, you know literally in the middle of nowhere um and he's got all his five mini mogs set up and he tells these stories and he makes michelle cry in a you know in a kind of a nice way with some affectionate stories uh, about her father which was really nice to see mm. that you can find on on youtube very easily um but yeah the great rick wakeman doing some plugging for korg with the nautilus um which there's a isn't there a lot of synth memes going around about the nautilus or there was a little while ago because it's so huge and so heavy um it, i've never never played one never seen one actually but that's uh, the first i've heard of it is when you sent that link oh really i, I don't even know what it is yeah, i, I like, assume it's a workstation of some yeah. sort oh it's quite a lump 
Yeah, it's, I think so. I think it's the new Kronos. Yeah, in other words, the, I think the it's the board. next generation from Kronos. I wonder mm. if it also takes three minutes to boot up because I hope <laughs> not. Um, That's for the electricity to travel across it. It's so fucking <laughs> yeah, long. But <laughs> they're lovely instruments to play, and oh, they have yeah. tons of great sounds, and they've included... I, I know the Kronos better than Nautilus, but there's a ton of their software synthesizer engines built into the thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, Roland's Cloud without the cloud. It's all built right. into this instrument. All the, you know, there's an MS-20, there's a Poly-6, there's... Yeah, they've got those, The history yeah. of Korg is built into this instrument yeah. as separate sound engines that can be used individually or side by side with others. Mm. And uh, yeah. it's an incredibly massive piece of software instrument with a lovely touchscreen display and fantastic feeling keyboard and they're yeah. very they're people love those instruments yes yeah. people who love yeah. them love them deeply it all started yeah. from and, the oasis didn't it yeah that was quite a quite yeah, a thing and it just went along from there yeah. mm. why well, do they had good so why, why do we have workstations still do you think oh, what's the tr attraction yeah. i mean yeah. the advent of doors becoming to a penny i mean you can have a door on your phone you know uh, where's the attraction still with a workstation mm. i don't understand traveling with one piece of gear that does a whole giant ton of stuff not unlike having vintage vault on your computer mm. okay. writing in tr writing entire tracks on one piece of equipment mm. the limitation of it in some respects helps you to be more creative then when it's done you can go from that machine into all the other plugins and stuff that mm. you want to add to replace various sounds and stuff so it's good to be able to just work in one small little space without a distraction of tons and tons and tons of gear around you so yeah. which is mainly what i use her for anyway which doesn't get wakeman off the hook because he's got tons and tons of gear <laughs> yeah, around that's him true. and a nautilus but yeah. uh <laughs> but no I, that's i've never the operative thinking mark is that it's yeah. just convenient to have some giant amount of things to draw from yeah. in a single instrument so you don't have to bring five instruments. Well, yeah. Makes sense, yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember when the M1 came out. I mean, it was just revolutionary that you could have just one keyboard and, you know, all that polyphony, all that multi-timbrality and essentially produce a professional sounding track from one instrument, you know. It's, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. it's a very important thing. Um, I never really got on with them. I've got the fusion which is probably the worst one of the worst workstations ever although it does have some really good sounds in it um it's probably not the easiest to navigate but just ne mm. never really appealed to me but and sonic and sonic made yeah. great workstations mm, out of yeah. almost every one of their gear they had good really usable quick se sequencers fully mm. featured built into these devices that had all these great sounds in them starting mm. at least from the eps sampler going forward arguably maybe earlier than that if you like if you want to call sq80 a workstation yeah yeah um just wanted to bring this up because we i i, I when we were talking about the uvi vintage vault i said what is mm -hmm. the hybrid 6000 a version of and thanks to kosh to kai uh in the chat apparently it's based on the casio ht6000 um Ooh. so i'm gonna need to go and find what at what that is but yeah i think uh, jean-michel jarry is one of those did he really? to hold the door open when it was warm <laughs> <laughs> i need to look into that i'm not isn't that uh, quite a, that's quite a big um casio isn't it this the ht6000 with the speed i don't know in should we do a live? I'll do a live search. It was do a a live search. bigger than the five thousand and not as big as the eight thousand. You mean? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no the eight thousand never happened in the end because it created oh, sort of like wormholes. It was so heavy. Too heavy. <laughs> Anti matter began floating. Face <laughs> oh, 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 come the Casio police. They're after you, Kent. They're always after me, but they'll never catch me. This isn't the best picture in the world, um, but this is what the. HT6000 looks like. There we go. Drum roll, please. It's just ah, yeah. nothing like I thought. No. But Boy, that's a lot maybe, of buttons. Yeah. yeah. So maybe there you go. I didn't use one of those. Well, you never know. <sighs> what well, year, what year is it go. from? Does it say that, Robbie? Um, let's have a look. Let's looks see. 90s. Mm, does. 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 Yeah. Um, By used. Possibly, yeah, well, no possibly late. Possibly late eighties. Yeah. 
Let's have a look. HT6000. I'd say it's 95. That's my money. You reckon 95? Okay. I reckon. Um, let's see. Is there a vintage? Is it? No, probably not on vintage. Was it? Mm, oh, let's have a look at Sonic State. So that's 91. 84. Really? What? Yeah, it's 90s. So it's yeah, it's way 18, ahead of its time. Oh, well, now that. I'm seeing in Wikipedia. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Wrong, wrong. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. So, yeah, apparently. 1984. Who to thunk? It's a spectrum dynamic polyphonic analog synth. Boy, that's a mouthful. Oh, it's analog. Uh, no, I remember. Yes, they, it, that's it. Yeah, because in the blurb on the UVI site, it said something SD. And I thought, what's that? It's spectrum dynamic. Um, uh, Casio's, although it says here Casio's late eighties analog synthesizers, but that said nineteen eighty four. So uh, touch response. Oh, here you go. HC six thousand. According to Wikipedia, the source of all accurate truth, um, <laughs> released in late nineteen eighty seven, but not widely available until late eighty eight. So, but that still nineteen eighty six. But yeah. wait, it says on Matrix Synth, if you mm. dive into the parameters, you'll capture some deep. Blade Runner tones. Oh, oh Kent was involved then. <laughs> now, if it now, excuse me, if it did, I would have known about it. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't bring this up. <laughs> That's actually quite interesting synth, isn't it? Um, so what was it? Four, Analog what? DCOs? What, DCOs, what yeah, four, four DCOs okay. per voice, um, which is twice as many as the CZ had, according well, to yeah, the Well, yeah, but they're not DCO really DCOs, waveforms. are they? No, it had 64 DCO waveforms to choose from, 32 basic, 16 with noise, and 16 with ring modulation, and eight independent VCF filters, one per voice versus one per channel. Uh, yeah, I mean, it seemed quite a... doesn't sound analog. I need to listen to some demos. Hmm. But there you go. Thanks, Koshtakai, for um, bringing us up to speed on that one. Um, mm. or, every day's a school day, so that's cool. Um, that's right. We've not got a huge. We've really talked a lot about a lot of this stuff, which is is great. But we haven't really spent a lot of time talking to Rich. I mean, I guess most people know what Rich does and what Rich is famous for, and your history because you know you're Those very soups. You're most, yeah. most recently, it's a beef brisket. I'm well, yeah. say, you're also known for your barbecue, um, and or almost for almost being killed by Kent and his. Oh, barbecue. don't bring that up. <laughs> what was that? I I had to. I, I tried to, to poison him. Apparently. <laughs> I gave Tried, but failed. I did him a I did him a burger, right? I was going to impress him because he come he's come over, he's at my place, and I'm going, All right, I'm we're gonna do a, a lovely barbecue for Richard. And Fiona's going, Yeah, 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 let's do that. So I make him a beautiful burger, I think, and put all the stuff in it. But it was the first time I'd ever barbecued anything. So essentially oh. what he got was a quite a nicely cooked burger, but on the inside when you cut into it, it it sort of you and opened Whoa. it up. It went, at you. yeah. So he said, "No, I won't have a second. Thank you." <laughs> that was very polite. <laughs> Not that he really had, and he only ate the edges of the first one. <laughs> you see, I mean, we here in the UK we do barbecues during the summer, but I would never have the the cojones to cook barbecue for an American because every time I've really? been to America and had barbecue, it's some of the most incredible food in the world. Do and you know? I just wouldn't have I wouldn't have the balls to do it. Uh but hats off for, for trying. But um you know. Well today's exercise is a slow cooker exercise, not a barbecue mm. exercise. Um though many have barbecued brisket and I'm sure mm. I'll get to that eventually. This was my first time and I mm. was specifically a slow cooker recipe that i was interested in you know mm -hmm. low and slow as they say so at the end you've got this like really really like um uh, well well roasted mass of beef <laughs> <laughs> that i then have to look for people to help me eat because my wife doesn't eat it oh wow well, <laughs> come on yeah. over guys Box it up, and send all, it over. And y'all in the chat room, come on over. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You've had, you've had the invite. Um, I mean, Rich, I, I, from a personal level, I mean, we've spoken many, many, many times. Um, but whenever yes. I look at your, your resume, it's it's just astounding the, the variety and the talent that you have worked with over the years. Um, you know, from everyone from Bowie to Elton John to Donna Summer to Shaka Khan, George Clinton, Robert Plant, 
Ashford and Simpson, Freddie Mercury, and I could go on, but but we just don't have the time. <laughs> um, Freddie, to be fair, Freddie wasn't there. It was possible. Okay, okay. Well, but still, I mean, that's you know, it's a feather in the cap. But um, and you also something I wasn't f- too familiar with was your movies and soundtracks and game soundtracks and, and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, of all the things that you've done in this wonderful long career of yours. You're going to ask me to pick one? No, no, no. I mean, (laughs) not necessarily, you know, who was the best person to work with or what's your favourite thing to do. But, I mean, if if you could say, look, you know, um, that one moment in my life where I just realised that I've got the best job in the world and I don't want this ever to end. what? There's been hundreds of them. Yeah. Every single time I get on a stage with that band for openers. Okay. Um, I mean, we could talk about the record productions all day long, but if you were talking about how many days of my life do I feel like I'm the luckiest guy on the planet, mm-hmm. you'd have to roll into it the thousands probably of gigs I've done with Chic, uh, because mm-hmm. every single time we go out there and play this music for live breathing humans, it's one of those days to me. I mean, you know, barring unforeseen, like the gig I played at 90 minutes after somebody slammed the door in my right hand. Um <laughs> You know, there. You know, there's, or the summer I got sick, or whatever. I mean, barring all of that, just in general, um, some it's all. I didn't expect any of this mm-hmm. when I got this job. I hadn't played music for my living as a major source of income for over ten years. Mm-hmm. It was I had done a lot of other things, run major recording studios, um, designed studios, learned computers on my own. Mm-hmm. Um, produced the music that eventually got me the Nile Rodgers job. Um, I worked in uh, electronic service. I worked in, as you said, home entertainment electronics. I also worked in Mm -hmm. professional audio. Um, And I was teaching in a small college and going back to grad school to get a master's degree so I could make some money when all of this came about. So I didn't Mm -hmm. expect any of this. I had done some things by then uh, in that studio that I described earlier that I ended up running but um, and worked in some major projects and with some major artists. But I kind of had given the idea that I was going to either play or apply do applied creation as my living, mm-hmm. and I was going into the education business when right. all this came about. Mm. So I didn't expect any of it. But it is such a, a rich and varied career. Um, yeah, it is. It's amazing. I can't believe it. <laughs> no, well, it's it's Even just I incredible. Can't believe it. Yeah. Um. So okay. I'll. I'll. Again, this is probably you know uh, picking one of your favorite children type questions. Oh, but yeah. Um, your favorite, your de- desert island synthesizer. If you could, you could only have one instrument, or maybe even not a synthesizer, but your know, one instrument that you could take on a desert island, and that's the only thing you can have until you're rescued. Including the Castro HT six thousand. Including the HT six thousand, yeah. It's got it, might one. Be, it, it might be this thing in the laptop. Okay. I'll give you that. Yeah. It might be that thing in the laptop. I mean it might be the nineteen fourteen Steinway Grand that's in okay. my dining room. Mm, right. Um and uh, I always, when we get to Desert Island, I always ask, is there a power supply? Um, <laughs> yeah, we'll give you that. We'll give you a power supply. Because usually it's Desert Island microphones, and then it's whether well, you have a 48 <laughs> volt supply or not. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, I'm not. <laughs> there are so many great instruments, and I've gotten to play a lot of them, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and do I, would I bring them to a Desert Island? Probably not. <laughs> this thing maybe and and a laptop to play the sounds and that, yeah. that would probably make me yeah. as happy as anything at this point because I just enjoy playing this thing mm-hmm. so much and you know this wouldn't suck I just my new uh, Roland FP60 that I got last year nice because I like the key bed and mm-hmm. who you know and it also happens to have some good sounds built into it and speakers so I can yeah. I don't have to like power up the whole world just to listen to a piano sound when mm-hmm. i just want to reach over and hear hear what a chord sounds like i can just mm-hmm. reach over and do it and yeah. i like having that at all times and i like having a guitar around yeah and i like having you know 
I like blowing into things, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know. Who, what would I bring? My wife and kids. I don't there know. You it's you know, kind of thing. Yeah. I, um, Chic is obviously one of the the top live acts in the world. Um, certainly, there's been this huge resurgence in in the love for Chic, the love for Nile, and and everything that he's done in the past, and bringing you know out on the road. Um, to as many people as you you can do you guys are to to use a euphemism uh, that's probably very english you're tight as a nun's chuff as they say over here <laughs> you, you're one of the tightest bands and you can see it when you guys play together the communication the telepathy that's going on there is just incredible how often do you because you guys play a lot but how often do you sit down and in rehearsal rooms and rehearse and for how long or do you even bother rehearsing <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> well we've we rehearse someone, by the way. <laughs> you bastard <laughs> sorry Ken <laughs> anyway to answer the question <laughs> we rehearse as needed but not yeah. usually uh, unless it's needed so Typically, we're playing a lot, and it isn't mm -hmm. pandemic, and you haven't been home for two years. But but we did do some playing along the way there. So mm -hmm. if we were going to come, we can basically just go and do the show if it's the show that we know. If it turns mm -hmm. into another show, if Niall gets another idea about what the show should be, or we have guest artists or have to make changes to the show, mm -hmm. in those cases, we'll go into rehearsal. It's kind of complicated and expensive to put everybody in the same place yeah. and rehearse this band so part of it is built around logistics part of it is built around the fact that we just know the show yeah. um that we play you know or and that we can divide up and play in different configurations so we mm -hmm. have to play 60 minutes on a particular night so certain things are going to come out of the show mm -hmm. we start from like a hundred minute show basically mm -hmm. and then things can come out of it. And if we have to make it two, we can make it two hours. But, but, uh, and we've done it longer than that too. We've mm. done shows. But, but, uh, typically the shows are 90 minutes or less. And it's mm. then a question of is it a 90? Is it a 75? Is it a 60? There are different set lists that represent those different concepts. What's the show like this year? Is it the same as last year? What, what changes are we making? If any, do we need to rehearse them? Mm -hmm. Can we rehearse them at soundcheck, or do we need to actually call a rehearsal? Quite often, sound checks are also rehearsals. Um, okay. And uh, for example, uh, next weekend we're going to go and play a private event, mm -hmm. and for uh, and I'm pretty sure that sound check will be a long one. Okay. Because we haven't played in uh, five or six months. Wow together so uh -huh. it but we have our crew and our crew are some of the most upstanding responsible intelligent reliable people you ever want to meet in life mm -hmm. and that stuff will be set up exactly where it needs to be it'll sound everything you'll put in your in ears and it'll sound just like we sounded the last time we finished playing mm -hmm. and we can start working immediately there's not there's not usually a whole lot of time. I mean, variables, guitar sounds, bass sounds, um, monitoring issues for various people, but never really for me. Um, mm -hmm. As long as we have our crew on the on the gig, um, you know, it's nine people, and you never know what's going to come up. But typically, we're rehearsing within half an hour, and we're out of there within an hour and a half. Cool. If we haven't seen each other for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh obviously pre-pandemic uh is is the the background for this question on average how many gigs a year does chic play i don't know the exact answer to that um <clears throat> it's a lot though isn't it in the last nine or ten years it's come up to a number that's over a hundred um when i started it. out in this band we were you know, when we started out playing live, we were playing 30 gigs a year. Mm. So now uh, because of the wonderful 
popularity that we have, particularly in the UK and Ireland, uh, mm -hmm. Scotland and Wales and mainland Europe and other far-flung markets, Australia, places where we can actually uh, play large venues uh, on our own and do well in them. Um, mm -hmm. We we now get a lot of a lot of bookings. Also, yeah. our management has improved considerably in the last bunch of years, and the whole organization has turned into this really nicely uh, constructed situation where we mm. all feel like we've got a second family, and there's a lot of love in the band. And that thing you described that you feel when we're playing as tight as whatever it was. <laughs> um, is something that I take enormous pride in and think the world of the fact that that's how we feel when we're all doing it because there is yeah. some other level of of telepathy that comes about uh, yeah. across the band and it's yeah. a wonderful thing to be part of. It it's is, exhilarating yeah. for yeah. us. Yeah, I mean, and I, I, I think it carries off the stage a little bit, which is why you noticed it. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. Definitely. I mean, I I haven't played live for many many years, but I was in a band, and we had uh, two or three bass players across the, the life of the band. But there was one guy, and I don't know what it is. We we didn't have you know much in common outside of the band, but we had that connection. As it, I was drums, he was bass. We had that connection, and I was distraught when he left. And I've actually been lucky enough to play with him again in the last few years, just jamming for fun, and that hadn't gone away. And it was so, that's great. That's a great it's, feeling. It's, it is such a good feeling to have that relationship, particularly you know drums and bass, um, who always work closely together. It's just an incredible feeling. And I think, like you said, I think it kind of gave me uh, gave me this kind of second sight. I can see when other people have got that thing going on because you can you don't just see it, you hear it. Um, a well rehearsed but uh, a well connected band, and 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 Shiga de definitely that. Well, thank you. It it has a lot to do with trust, mm -hmm. and yeah. in my case, it has a lot to do with getting out of my own way, mm -hmm. uh, and getting into a sort of a meditative trance when we're playing the show. Yeah, I'm um, um, completely um, my my feet are barely in my in my mind. My feet don't even touch the ground when we're playing because mm -hmm. I'm just I'm in another completely other space where I'm not judging anything. I'm just feeling everything spontaneously and it's it's a very blissful and safe and trusting place yeah. to be and it takes the right combination of people to feel like you can achieve that level of trust within yourself at least for me that's mm. been my experience sure. and uh we've been through you know a bunch of chic bands in the time i've been in the band because i've been mm. in this band for like 30 years and uh it always had an element of that always because all the people that we've had in the band have been fantastic musicians and yeah people definitely. so yeah um Absolutely. this band is this this band is like that and i am just so thankful mm. and in in awe of the fact that this music this 40 year old 45 year old whatever it is music that um that it presents now to people like it's new I yeah. mean, we, we, we're not traveling like a legacy act. We're traveling like current artists. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely. an amazing thing. Um, there's a question in the chat from Prometheus. He's clearly based in the UK. Yes. Um, but he wants to know if you're still playing at the Sandown race course later in the year here in the UK. Do you, do you happen to know? I'm looking. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> do I know? No. Um, but I can find out. Do you know the date <laughs> that I was supposed to be at Sandown? No idea. No, maybe. Oh Prometheus. yeah, yeah, July twenty seventh, Sandown. Oh, two days before my birthday. Excellent. So that's still on. Hopefully, fingers crossed. As far as I know, COVID. Yeah, uh, Excellent you know, stuff. if ours, and I'm pretty sure it's been advertised. So I don't think yeah. I'm speaking out of turn here, which I'm not cool. supposed to do. But uh, sure. But um, still in the yeah, diary. It's nice. on. It's on my schedule for the twenty nice. seventh of July nice um and i'm not entirely sure what this question refers to but it, paul wants to know do you have a big green egg um, no i know what it refers to it refers to a barbecuing device um, oh, right. no i don't i once had a uh cylindrical column smoker 
charcoal oh, okay. smoker with the pan of water halfway up and the coals <laughs> at the bottom and uh, two grates that would allow you to smoke a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. It's really, really labor intensive and I used to enjoy doing it, but I don't so much do that anymore. So I don't have a big green egg and I don't have a, excuse me, I don't have a, char a charcoal smoker anymore either. I, I have a, a straight up gas grill, a very nice Weber grass, gas grill, and I have a Weber yes. performer, which is gas fired coal that I can okay, use yeah. Yeah. when I want to use charcoals. And uh, yeah. so I have a, I'm a two grill man right now. Out of wow. My <laughs> Proper barbecue. <laughs> Um, I'm feeling hungry all over again. There was another question that's just come in from uh, Andy, synth addict. Um, are you allowed or encouraged to improvise much on your keyboards in the live shows, or do you have, you know, are you religiously kept to a you know, format? I, well, let's. <clears throat> I play. My, my particular role in the band is executing parts that are written with as much feeling and reliability as possible. So very little of my show as I, perf as I perform it is improvised. Mm -hmm. The little diddly-doos that I do improvise, if I like them enough, become part of what I do. Okay. But they tend to be fills and answers to other things that happen on the stage that are not the part of the, the cake that I have to help bake so that all that other wonderful icing can float on top. So mm -hmm. as it relates to my role in the band, it's mostly part playing with reliability and feeling. And so there isn't a lot of improv in what I do. The sure. music kind of suggests, here's how chic music kind of works. Guitar, bass, and drums are the sun. Mm -hmm. This music exists fundamentally in guitar, bass, and drums. Yeah. Everything else... The, the string sounds, the keyboards, the, the horns, the, the vocal, even the vocals are almost like planets revolving around that core, mm -hmm. which is the sun, which is the guitar, bass, and drums. And so in my vision of my role in the band, I have to provide as reliable a foundation for those guys to make that kind of magic happen that makes these songs work. Mm -hmm. um, and the discipline for me is in the quality and consistency of that ex execution. That's just what my chair is about, the yeah. chair that I sit in, in in the band. So there isn't a lot of improvisation in my chair. Mm -hmm. There's more improvisation in some of the other chairs, more extemporaneous stuff. But I think my role in this band and the person who sits in my chair should mm -hmm. be uh, is providing that foundational stuff. Cool. Interesting to know. Um, Mark, Kent, did you have any um, specific questions you wanted to throw Rich's way while you've got the chance? Go ahead, Mark. I've got a question. Go for um, it. Rich, earlier you said that you play for hours every day and practice. What, do you have a specific practice schedule? Are you practicing scales, arpeggios and stuff, or are you just practicing the set? You know, do, does it change up? What kind of things do you I'm do? Not, I'm not usually practicing too much chic music. There might be a lick or two in the show that... I want to make sure that I'm executing properly. Uh, but t it's most mostly what I'm doing is preparing my hands. So it's technique, most of it. It's, there's scales and arpeggios. There's, there's technical exercises that I do as a routine. And it's not hours and hours. It's usually anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. And what I'll do is I'll sit down and I'll, fr I'll play freely for whatever 10 or 15 minutes and then i'll do all 12 scales and arpeggio you know all 12 keys scales and arpeggios and then i'll play extemporaneously for another 10 minutes and then i'll do the first 20 hannon exercises and at the end of that i'm usually good if i do that for you know so now i've been doing it for weeks and uh because i know that we're going to go out and play and i need my hands to work at that mm -hmm. level and i kind of let them slide a bit in the intervening months mm -hmm. so that's yeah. sort of what my practice routine is about right now if i have something to work up then i practice whatever that is you know whether it be a piece of music or a section of chic music or whatever i have to do but i don't have the exact rig here that i use in chic anyway so the execution parts are weird are different 
Mm, there you, you go. Because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be mocking it up on this rig, which is not. Th this is the same actual key bed as I use on stage on both keyboards, which is a great thing. But uh, there's nothing on the chic show <laughs> stage that feels like that. So I'd be yeah. like kind of just mocking it up. I'd put a put a road sound up, take off all the pitch variation, and just play Fender Rhodes on the top, like I sort of do in chic. Mm -hmm. Nice. How about you, Kent? Anything you wanna? Um, well, that's the problem, you see. Um, me and Rich have been <laughs> best buddies for... <laughs> a lot of years. Ever. <laughs> and we've talked about everything. We've been through all sorts of things together and talked and it all out and stuff. Tried to kill him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, it was something to do, you know, something different. Okay. He's probably never had that done before. There was um, nothing but love in the room oh, yeah. when that was going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. But um, I'm literally the only question I could probably ask you, Rich, is, so how are you feeling today? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm oh, feeling really good. Follows me everywhere. I'm, f I'm feeling really good. Good, man, good. Today. Uh, my health is good. I'm cooking. I'm having fun with my friends. Um, uh Thinking about musical things and talking about musical things and with yeah. people I really we used, like. We the thing is, we used to have these Skype conversations where he would, you know, I'm talking to him on my iPad. He's on his iPad. I'm in the workshop. He's in the kitchen preparing a soup, and we're talking about things. And the guy was, "Wait, we don't." He said, "Oh, I'm just cutting up the carrots now. They're going to go in." And so, and I'm watching him cook. He's watching me repair a Rhodes Chroma or something like that. And we're talking about everything, and it goes on for hours and hours and hours. You know, it's been. <laughs> I do love to cook. It's I know. True. I, I know. I learned how as a young man. I didn't get married until I was over thirty, and uh, somebody had to do the cooking. And there yeah. were periods. There were some pretty lean years where I wasn't cooking. When I learned to cook, I wasn't very wealthy. Let's, let's put it that way. And I mm. was also a vegetarian at the time, and so that kind of gave me the discipline that I continue to use to this day, even though I'm no longer a vegetarian. Uh, I do enjoy cooking in the same ways that I did. And I've always enjoyed it. And it's just, it's it's expressive to me. It's like making music. It's art. Mm. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, there was just one more question. I'm just going to permit this one, and then sure. um, we'll. This was from uh, Sasquatch, who uh, is a regular and one of our moderators in the chat. Um, <laughs> is Richard going to buy one of the new Rhodes keyboards? He wants to no. know. No. no. There you go. A I answer. mean, if the day comes <laughs> where ten thousand dollars doesn't even make a dent in my psyche, <laughs> <laughs> then may. In other words, where where I can afford to buy vanity purchases like that just because mm -hmm. i want them uh, then maybe i mean in yeah. other words i'm not resistant to it it's just that my life isn't about having 10 grand to spend on a keyboard that i really don't need um mm -hmm. right now and yeah. that's just the fact of the yeah. matter i mean if i have to that'll do yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had a Rhodes. actually my son james has a Rhodes 73 from the 1970s in his basement and it was in my basement for many years and it hardly got played if i need it for music productions chances are i'm playing scarby's roads anyway because mm -hmm. it doesn't yeah. need to be maintained it's perfectly in tune and it sounds amazing um is so it the Scar one you had in your basement the one with midi was that the midi no one? No, 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 no. It wasn't a MIDI Rhodes. No, what I had with MIDI was a CP60. Ah, right, okay. You'll recall. Yes. And one of the enduring uh, regrets of my life <laughs> is that the day I gave it to my son James to bring to the, to the uh, dump because I couldn't get anybody to buy it, it was broken. It had a broken pickup. And to change the pickups in these things, you basically have to remove all the strings. It wasn't going to... Yeah. It was never going to happen. Yeah. So... What I forgot to do was tell him to tape down the sustain pedal so that when he pushed it off the ledge and it hit the ground below, that it made a really, really cool kabong. <laughs> and it didn't. It just went gunk. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of my sound designs. Put it design. back up again. Back up again. Yeah, it's <laughs> <regrets. laughs> You're right. All right. Let's do yeah, it again. Do it again. Do it, do it again. <laughs> um, oh, dear. But, so, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> uh, uh, you know what? Acoustic pianos don't make great MIDI controllers. And and I'll even go out on a limb even further. Guitars don't make great MIDI controllers mm. to me. I don't feel connected to the MIDI sound on any of those instruments the way mm. I do. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. That's as connected to a vibration as I've yeah. ever felt playing a keyboard instrument. Yeah. But when I used to play brass instruments, you are the vibration. And when you sing, you are the vibration. And when you play guitar, you're touching the vibration. And I'm interested in the distance between me and the vibration, mostly, these days. Mm -hmm. yeah. So piano is kind of a machine operator's position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that uh, brings us nicely to the end of the show. Um, Richard, thank you so much for coming on. It's, it's a real pleasure and an honor uh, to have you visit our little corner of the internet um, thank, so thank you, you Robbie and thanks to Ben in absentia and thank you Mark and thank you Kent for joining no me here it's been a very enjoyable afternoon and I really appreciate your interest in any of this quite honestly no, absolutely mm -hmm. no, thank and you. same to all of you guys in the chatties my friends yes. in the ch my friends the chatties who've been with us for years and years now and yeah. we keep gathering new wonderful people and I'm mm. I couldn't be more honored and grateful to be among you all because I just feel a, a bond, a sincere bond of kindness from everybody and I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's a good community. It's a good it community. Yeah. Um to my guest host, Kent, first of all, up there. Is that yes. is that emulator switched on now? Is no. it plumbed in so we we couldn't hear that, no. But You want you wanted me to do the um Blue Monday choir, didn't you? There was that or yeah. um, the, the reggae thing that was used in Blade Runner, that film. No, what you I've know. done is I've brought it film? up here. Yeah. <laughs> I brought it up here because this, this is the one that was norm that's normally lives in the kitchen. Okay. Uh, As you do, stairs. you know. Everyone's this, got an emulator yeah. in the kitchen. It's abandoned. <laughs> okay. It's been okay. upgraded to 8-note poly and nice. got the SD card reader on her now as well. Mm -hmm. And then So does that SD card reader fill the disc tray or can you still put discs in there? You can, if you wish flip her up out of the way oh look at that yeah yeah, yeah. and we still have the um, five and a quarters for it nice as well nice. and um oh yeah. i remember i left that there with you now Kate. yeah uh-huh i remember yeah. i remember yeah yes. i'll pick it up don't worry don't worry i'll have a burger ready for you yeah <laughs> that's how he stops you stealing his sins yeah. he kills you with a burger and then over here i got the um because I, I, Ben was in the chat room. I think he's gone. Yeah, I think he popped yeah, in very quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I don't know if you can. Can you? Can you? Let me, let me get out. Can't of, really. Oh, way. is that? Yeah. I can Remember. see some knobs. <laughs> anyway, let me, let me, oh, look at that. Here he goes. Oh, we're off. We're off on a journey now. <laughs> oh, blimey. Oh, lights. Dogs. <laughs> Oh, is that sound again? <laughs> what is he doing? There you go, that works now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> what has he done? Don't break anything. What is that? That's rich. <laughs> um, is that a Mark II Melodron by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> can you see it now? Yes, we can. Yeah, what is that? That's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, it's a dog. <laughs> A it's polymath, a, a, a Nyborg, oh, yes. a polymath, yeah. and a Leipzig. Nice. He's going to have fun, isn't he? He is going to have fun. And yeah. after Mind hearing... Mind you, don't hit that emulator. Oh. <laughs> I respired that. Well, th yeah, well, the thing is, that's, I don't want it marked before I steal it tomorrow. So, <laughs> like, like you can walk out with an emulator one under your arm. Oh, look at it, though. It's just what? beautiful. I had to carry a DX1 out to a car this afternoon. Oh, that one, yeah. And I now don't have a, uh, any <laughs> testicles left. <laughs> well, you're not carrying it right. <laughs> Did you, you? Well, when we put the one that I've got into the back of my motor, you had that lovely trolley contraption. Yeah. Where was that? Um, no, he was in a big rush. Because what he'd done, he parked it in the middle of the road. Oh, Cause some, okay. cause Somebody had stolen our parking space. So he's parked it in the middle oh. of the road. And as we're carrying it out... This car pulls up behind us, uh, and we're trying to get in the back of the car, and he had to do this little toot. Oh, there we go. Ugh. Of course. Yeah. 
Did you and turn he, around and give him the Vic Di Botello look? No, no, it didn't. But once we got it in and he closed the tailgate down to get back in the car, it was toot again. <laughs> you hate people like that. There's never a house brick to hand when you need one, isn't there? No, quite. <laughs> so, Oh, well. Well, look, yes, thank you for getting that out for me. I, I'm looking forward to playing with that tomorrow. Oh, this? Yeah, that. Oh, yeah. okay. And the CS80, maybe. I thought we were going to do that again. Oh, that thing again. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, look, thanks, Kent, for stopping by, helping out as per usual. It's always fun to have you on the show. Um, and I will make sure I make there's plenty of room in the boot for that when I come and see you tomorrow. Um, Mark. <laughs> Hello. Love, lovely to see you again, because it's been a while. And so, yep, yeah. It was, I mean, we keep in touch outside yeah, of this man. thing, but it's just nice to see and talk to you face yeah. to face, as it were. <laughs> anything, yes. anything good coming up in your world? Well, hopefully more of the same at the moment. N not mm -hmm. more of moving the studios around, more but of... Making music. Making music and being happy, you know, feeling good. And I think that's that's got to be the priority. Oh, absolutely. Everything yeah. else comes down from there. And yeah. I think I've had mm -hmm. that the wrong way around before. Yeah. So, no, feeling good cool. at the moment. No, but lo it's lovely to have you back in our world. Good to be here on the screens and um i just want to bring adamski a who's going to be on the show um soon i will cool. confirm that very um we have a new name for kent kent spong the burger murderer <laughs> <laughs> really thank you for that yeah really yeah talking it's of true Adam, it's true yeah talking of adamski a uh, or adam as we know him um let's give you because he's actually no it's next week isn't it look at that is how how soon does that come around so mm -hmm. adam skier will be on the show next week uh telling us all about his um handcrafted synthesizers because there's more than one um mm -hmm. and uh, we want to know how he's getting on with that how far down the line and, and how soon we can get our hands on one so tune in next week for that um we're still holding the week after we're getting closer we think so fingers crossed we're not going to say anything but we might have somebody rather extra special uh coming up uh there um then we're into march already i mean it's literally two weeks away from march what's going on it was only christmas yesterday um dave bryce will be joining us uh dave bryce uh works a lot for um cloud microphones and reverb foundry amongst other things he's a great keyboardist as well uh, <clears throat> excuse me so he will be on the show march 4th uh march 11th we are joined by dan goldstein from cherry audio so we're going to hear a lot about him and his great work uh with producing all of those really great um emulations at stunningly <coughs> cheap prices so um we'll hopefully get the the lowdown on what how, how they go about doing all their work and, and maybe we'll get a sneak preview of what they might be doing in the future um then march 18th we've got uh, starsky car i was just about to launch into a terrible liverpudlian accent and out of respect <laughs> i refrained but starsky will be on I the show I'll go straight there alone with and no i'm not gonna do it no. um so we're gonna get the perspective of a uh, a, a professional youtube reviewer um who has a huge following on on his channel and is one of the you know one of the most respected kind of uh, synth YouTube reviewers and demonstrators and instructors out there. So um, yeah, looking forward to that one. Um, we don't have a picture for the next guy because uh, Ben's been very busy. He's not been very well actually this week. So I hope he's feeling better. He's at the gig. I did tell him to take a bucket. Um, March twenty fifth, we've got the great Eric Norlander coming on the show, and I'm really looking forward to that one. Mm. Um, and then April first. We've stolen yet another Sonic State stalwart. We've got Gaz Williams coming on. E um, so Gaz is on the 1st of April. 8th of April, we've got Kelly Marie. Uh, April 15th, we don't, again, have a picture for this one, but I am so excited about this. I've been friends with Tara and Maff uh, of I Speak Machine for many, many years. Tara's now got a new album coming out in April. Um, it's called War. It's under the banner of I Speak Machine. The new single is out now. Um, it's called the metal in my hell it is stunning and it's full of oberheim tvs apparently um but we're going to get the whole lowdown on on the four-year recording of that new album uh which she has done in her little studio in la and uh it's just really great stuff 
April 22nd, live, we hope, from EMIAP in Philadelphia, uh, on the eve of his album launch, will be Mr. Michael Whalen. Mm. And he's promised us some uh, some performances live, and maybe we'll get a GX1 in there, or a, a CS80 at least. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, we've got him coming up in uh, April 22nd. Um, May 6th, we've got Andrew Longhurst. You might not know the name, but he has been... Yeah, again, I mean this in the nicest possible way. He's been around the block and he's worked in some of the great studios with some great people. So really looking forward to him. And that wouldn't have happened had it not been for Kent's show. Because Kent does this kind of random thing on a Tuesday that runs, how long was it for this week? Eight and a half hours. Eight and a half hours. <laughs> but M- but from now on, it's happening on Thursdays. Okay. So we're moving for to nine and a half hours. For nine and a half. <laughs> uh, well, and, uh, until until just before this show starts. I was going to say he's he's the PSN um, warm up act. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, I met Andrew. The through guy goes into a bar. Yeah, yeah, I met Andrew through there and had no idea about his illustrious no. um, background. So I said, right, you're coming on the show, mate, and he's booked uh, May sixth mm. in June. We're going to be joined by uh, one of the most prolific and um, What's the uh, chart-topping songwriters in the UK, Elliot Kennedy, who's written hits for God knows how many people. Sheffield lad, born and bred, um, will be joining us on June 10th to tell us uh, about his songwriting career, his his love of synthesizers and music technology. So lots of great people coming up on the show um, and more uh, are coming in as we speak. So um, do stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, make sure you do that to make sure you get uh, notified of everything and it helps us with our numbers too which is always nice um so please do subscribe and like the video underneath and tell your friends tell your families share it on your socials that'll be fantastic thank you very much so i think that uh that kind of wraps us up i'll see you tomorrow kent i will speak to you very soon oh, yes. richard and zaf and uh to everyone in the chat room thank you ever so much for joining as per normal um we love you all and um we we think the world of you you keep us going we do it just for you nothing else and it keeps us occupied for a couple of hours on a friday thank you so much gentlemen great to see you and um, we'll see you all next week take care bye bye uh-